Well, 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 if it isn't me, the king of the castle, and if it isn't you, a dirty rascal. <laughs> How are you doing, everyone? Hello, welcome to another stream here on youtube.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. I'm Johnny Chiodini, that's me, here I am, here I go, and today we are returning to the excellent king of the castle. Let's see if this is going to be very loud, because the music's great. Is that a bit loud? How do we feel about it? Nice Switch says, well, shit, I am the dirty rascal. Hello, Nice Switch. It's very, very nice to see you in chat. It's nice to be back. Sound echo, eh? Um, <laughs> Shaw's the Great and Powerful, aka P Noctimus on Super Chat, saying, I'm going to ruin this whole, this NB's whole career. Amazing. Music is good. Okay. Oh, uh, I just turned it down a touch. Uh, anyway, um... La 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 la, no echo for me, good good good. Alrighty then, um, so, if you didn't catch the stream when we played this last time, oh goodness me, it's fun. Uh, this is a game where I will be a regent, um, and you, chat, will be able to um, join in as a faction and try and help me run the kingdom. Or, as is considerably more likely, trying to overthrow me and put one of your faction on the throne which is rude of you but uh, I suspect you're going to be doing it anyway um you can join in with your phone um because I'm not streaming on Twitch as you can probably tell from you know this being YouTube um you can't use chat uh commands um so don't bother typing like exclamation mark revolution or something in chat um some of you will be able to join by phone. I think there is a hard limit on how many. I'm not sure how many it is now, but we'll we'll make it work, basically. I've got a couple of super chats to read and also a kindly reminder that my pronouns are they, them, not he, him. Thank you very much. Uh, Ducks piloting a mech while high. <laughs> has done a super chat saying, Hello, once more to the great and powerful Chiodini. Wish I could see you at MCM London, but my manager has already booked the dates off to go himself. Well, sounds like King of the Castle is not the only game that needs a revolution in town. I think that made sense. Titan Uranus has done a super chat saying, Time for Johnny to put the RP back into RPG. Thank you. I wouldn't call my voice received pronunciation, but I have been called a posh twat before, so... There you go. Uh, Laura Anderson on a super chat saying, just a little token because I so rarely catch the streams live. Just got back from a job interview so I could do with a nice chill. Well, Laura, it's going to be nice. Well, it's going to be chill. I don't know if it's going to be nice for me. I'm really quite nervous about becoming a monarch again. Lisa Hunt says, please tell us about that jumper you're wearing. It's a satyr. A satyr? One of the, one of the like, goat-legged panpipe, like, toot -a toot guys. Um, that you may have encountered and murdered in Hades. Um, thank you very much for the super chat, Lisa. Um, Haywise has a super chat saying, Hello again, your for now, Royal Highness. Is it possible for thy heralds to give a shout out to my partner, Becca, for their birthday today? Becca! You hath completed another circumnavigation of the sun on this the rock we call planet Earth. Many felicitations for this most auspicious day. You are truly an excellent being, and I hope the year ahead brings much joy to you and your loved ones. Matt Wetton, so Super Chat saying, we'll be watching on VOD, so we'll have to catch up with you being dragged through the streets by the mob later. Six Semper Tyrannis. Wowie. Nice Switch says, look, I call a lot of people posh twats, I'm sorry. It's fair. If the shoe fits, Nice Switch. Uh, Aiden Folks has done a super sticker of like a lemon person that's kind of running towards the screen and then drops to their knees and goes like, ah, and pops out some like lemon wings, which for all I know could be like a blood eagle, but we're not, we're not entirely sure. Right. Um, let us go to kingdom. <laughs> Let's let's get this thing on the road. I will show you though. I spent a minute in the uh, customization screen earlier, making my monarch look about right. And um, there's me. It's not bad, is it? It's pretty good. 
Um, anyway, right, let's get the show on the road. Welcome to King of the Castle. What is King of the Castle? I reset all the tutorials, whoops. It's a social storytelling game where you play with friends as a party game via browsers or with your Twitch chat. Don't have one of those. Uh, you play the monarch of a fantasy kingdom, making uh, playing through events and making decisions. Players can join your game as nobles in the council who come from one of three regions. They can vote on certain decisions and scheme to usurp you. I must su survive and get my heir onto the throne. I've customised my monarch so uh, they have personal flair. And then I'm going to start a new dynasty. So there we go. No, I shall not be continuing with the get link your Twitch. New Dynasty. Here we go. Um, Ducks piloting a mech while high is on a super chat saying, I hope I hate the Satyrs in Hades almost as much as you hate Theseus. He's the absolute worst. Also can't wait for Hades too. Neither can I. It's very good, that game. Um, KZ Beans has done a super chat saying, Hi Johnny, my baby absolutely loves watching you paint minifigures. So thanks, thanks for babysitting so I can eat breakfast each morning. You're welcome. Uh, I hope I do not do lasting damage to your child's development. Uh, Talman's done a super chat saying, Given thy pronouns, long night's journey into they. Very good. Right, here we go. Monarch name, Johnny. <laughs> Uh, dynasty name, Skelly Pals. Of the Skelly Pal dynasty? Monarch Johnny of the Skelly Pal... Pal... Mm, Skelly Pal dynasty. Uh, I do use they, them pronouns. Look at that. Let us begin. Uh, it's a party game, alright. Uh, your friends can join via an internet browser. All they need to do is go to kotc.app and input the code. A limit of 24 players applies. So, um... 24 of you will be directly scheming, the rest of you will be scheming in chat. I hope that is okay. Alex Simpkins on a super chat saying, just had a biology idea about Oxventure. I dread the rest of this super chat, Alex. I'm not gonna lie. As dragonborns are reptiles, and reptiles have temperature-dependent sex determination, would that mean it's possible for there to be female other birds? Uh, yes. I suppose. Yeah, why not? Hmm, there we go. Right, select kotc.app and get ready to input a code. Um, and there we go. Okay, choose three regions. Now, let's see. We've got the bar Barons of the Marsh. They're brash rural lords famous for their belligerence belligerence and fondness for hunting. The chiefs of the north are honourable warriors renowned for their pagan religion and prowess in combat. The counts are ruthless aristocrats steeped in secrecy. Allegations of forbidden rituals are unproven. Well, we're definitely taking those. The grandees are impassioned duelists known for their strict adherence to the honour to honor, etiquette and the ninth god. We didn't have them last time, I don't think. And the patricians are wealthy seafaring merchants no noted for their cleverness, skill in negotiation and ornate masks. Let's take the counts of the east, the grandees of the south and the patricians of the coast. Um, Emma Burner's on a super chat saying, Johnny, tell us honestly, are you not having the Oxventurers level up to keep Corazon from annoying enemies into not attacking the others and stop Marilyn from being able to turn into elementals? I'm getting, like, I genuinely have been getting a lot of people saying, why aren't you letting them level up? It's not, like, it's not actually really my decision when we level up. Um, I agree we should do it soon. Um, but it's, I, there isn't a secret agenda for me to be like, no, you're not leveling up. I know people really want it. Um, and I hear you. But I promise I'm not being a dick. Um... Unless you listen to some of the comments on the last episode, when apparently I committed a hate crime. Anyway. Right. Join the game. Right, kotc.app. I'm going to show the room code. E-K-W-M. E-K-W-M. Echo... Kiwi, or Kilo Whiskey Mother? Here we go! Wow, there's a lot of you. It's letting a lot of you join. 30 noble counts, 30 noble grandees, 31 noble patricians. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so we've got 31 noble counts, 31 noble grandees, and 32 noble uh, patricians. A NMS Ninja says, I don't read comments. What was the hate crime? Lol. I... I, I said that Ellen's use of animal friendship wouldn't work, and uh, people were um, upset. Anyway, um, all right. 33 of each. Now 34 of each. I don't... Right. That's 34 of each of you. Okay. Aslan Silver says, I've seen hundreds of people in this game. Crinspec Vander says I'm getting an error. Ah, oh, Lou Jones says, very sad I can't join because my custom nobles look amazing, but it's probably for the best that I don't upstage you, my liege. You can try, Lou Jones. All right. Neko the Kitty says, hey, Johnny and Scully just came in from Ellen's Twist D&D game. It's positively delightful. I've not watched it yet, but it sounds great. Okay. I'm sorry to those of you who are getting an error. Amaya Kane says, I think they put the access in line to join. Right, well, let's kick this off. Dong! Sorry if there is a, yeah, uh, an error. Okie dokie. Oh, great. Connection error, reconnecting. Uh-oh. This doesn't seem good. Let's just wait. I'm going to go full face for a sec because of that intermittent flashing. Um, hmm. I may have to alt F4 and restart the game, which would mean putting the code in again. Emma Burns on another super chat saying, another Oxventure lore question. Because of the two sons of Geth, is there another sun god that's more popular than, than Lavash Mauve? God, Maybe. Another reminder, my pronouns are they, them, not he, him. Um, please remember that, because I've done two reminders now for the same person. So, uh, this is balked, so let's alt F for that. Sorry, everyone. Um, we'll load back in. Marissa J says, this is a protection mechanism. The game can sense the Skelly's desire to dethrone Johnny. Yeah, it would seem that way. Right. Did you know the or the uh, origin of the word balked? There was a judge in the US who was like a shoe in for a Supreme Court nomination. Uh, and he managed to screw it up so badly that people refer to screwing something up as balking it because his surname was Bork. Um, he literally balked it. It's amazing. Right, here we go. Monarch name. Johnny. Skelly pal. <laughs> Begin. Timothy Thomas has done a super chat saying, Hey Johnny, so glad to have you back. Hope you're well rested. I missed the last stream, so here's February fee plus a little extra as holiday pay. Timothy, that's really lovely. Thank you. Um, I feel very good. I'm, I'm nice and well rested. Uh, and I'm looking forward to being dethroned. All right. Here we go. Room code time. H N C E. Hence, hence forth, hence forth. In we come. Who have we got? We've got Baddy Wrong Legs. I saw Ronnie in there. Hello, Ronnie. Um, Dorf. Palace. Sean Patrick, the Indigo Witch. Kaz. Karaduin. Karadwin. <laughs> oh no, I can feel myself wanting to go Terry Wogan. Welcome, Yosh Sky, he him. Afera is in the Grandees of the South. Colin, he him. There's a patrician if ever I've seen one. <laughs> and sneaking into the Grandees of the South, underneath my lovely face, Huff T. Hedgehog. <laughs> Who's feeling it? Who's feeling it? All right, you'll get the same error. Big in game. Let's see what we get. Please don't screw up. The path to victory. Acquire an heir that complete your ambition to win. The first reign will likely end in disaster. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Keep an eye on the region's schemes. If they pass all their all their stages, they'll win the game. 
Uh, be careful of the region's defiant stat. If it gets too high, the regions may rebel against you. Nobles. To win, pass all three stages of your scheme. Each stage requires you to get stats to certain levels, which are affected in votes. Uh, how you vote is up to you for your region scheme to stop other schemes or for the good of the kingdom. Good of the kingdom, please. Um, and rebellions, if your defiant stat is high enough, you can rebel. This pauses your scheme and is risky, especially if you have low military. Well, let's go. Events. Each season you'll get three events to play. Click on one to get started. Here we bloody go. Here's, here's the south. Here's the east. Here's the coast. The path to victory. Right, coronation. Let's coronate me, shall we? I apologise if any of you are n not in and are disappointed. Um, okay, the monarch. This is your monarch. The main player's character. They appear in most stories, but not all. Kingdom stats. These are kingdom stats. If any of them are zero at the start of the season, the game will end. Authority, stability, and treasury. Region stats. Stats determine which events are generated. Defiance. If defiance is higher than both authority and stability, a region can trigger a rebellion. This will pause their scheme and is risky if military is low. You can scroll through the full list of nobles and their wealth here. And the noble list. Alright, let's do this. Here comes my Chancellor. Your Majesty, I've scheduled your coronation to take place in a week's time. Shouldn't I be giving the orders now? Of course, Your Majesty, but to delay any longer would make the nobles restless. And when nobles get restless, they take their daggers and look for the nearest back. Uh, we wouldn't that, want that, I suppose. As is tradition, the council will decide what happens at your coronation. What? But it's my coronation! I should move my face. Boop! Down I go. Uh, it's my coronation. This isn't an absolute monarchy, Your Majesty. Everything has to be run past a council vote. Even this. Well, sod it. Shall we call the nobles in? Choices and stats. Certain choices will change stats. Some choices that do so will indicate this change. Yum, yeah. Not all choices that change stats have these indicators, and they do not show the region affected. Right. Voting. These are the upcoming choice your nobles will vote on. Each of these may change stats in some way. The monarch can change how a vote is run with a law. You may use one law per vote. Try using your veto on one opinion, one option you dislike. When the vote opens, nobles vote on which choice, choice they want in the browser. The monarch may close the vote any time after all nobles have voted, or the time it hits zero. So, I can mark my preferred voting option, or I can veto an option. For example, here are the four options. Host a lavish parade with jugglers and fountains of wine. Force the commoners to swear a blood oath, which will put up authority uh, and decrease stability, unsurprisingly. We could throw the monarch into the river, which is what happened last time. We played this. You threw me in the river. Or the nobles must put on a vast banquet for the monarch. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to veto... Throw the monarch in the river, because, frankly, I can see all of you just going, lol, it's river time. Um, and you've already done that once. You've done that once. So, Becca says, river is just tradition by this point. Not if I can bloody help it, Becca. Start the vote. Ding, ding. All right. Uh, oh, no. Why? We could be having a lavish parade with jugglers and fountains of wine. Or you could be throwing me a party. Ronnie and, and bi fi Robin are okay with that. But no, you want the commoners to swear a blood oath. Nice Witch says, yeah, blood. Okay, well, that's that's that then. Voting has closed. Thirty-two nobles voted for force the commoners to swear a blood oath. Eleven from the patricians, nine from the grandees, and twelve from the counts. Well, the patricians and the counts are my least favourite factions so far. Congratulations by default to the grandees. Serenity Moon 1976 says you should have just gone in the river. Don't blame me for this. 
The common citizens of the capital are lined up in a winding queue that loops along a dozen streets. One by one, they are brought before your throne, bowing and scraping. And just right bang on time, Marissa J has unleashed the blood pair. Uh, this is a sticker, a super sticker. It's sort of an animated sticker that can pop up in chat, and oh my goodness, has this ever. It's a pear, uh, a piece of fruit, but with arms and legs and a face and a mug. And Garina Rain has summoned this as well. Um, it's basically a big piece of fruit with arms and legs and a face, and it's got a mug. And the mug is brimming with blood, just full of it. And just... It keeps thrusting it about. And apparently, that's a pretty good representation of the kingdom so far. So thanks, everybody. Carlin Lassa says, This blood oath is why we must depose them. I shouldn't have got out of bed this morning. The common citizens of the capital are wind lined up in a winding queue that loops along a dozen streets. One by one, they are brought before your throne, bowing and scraping. This shows how much your chat has... Uh, which stat has been changed and how much by. After a bit of prodding from your watchman, each citizen slices their palm and smears their blood on your boots, swearing their eternal loyalty. No amount of scrubbing will save your shoes after this. My boots and their hands! Horrible. <coughs> Awful. Um, authority is now commanding. The last monarch to hold a blood oath ceremony was King Tymion, the Mad. <laughs> who also once declared war on the colour blue. The peasants mutter darkly that another tyrant now sits the throne. Stability is now teetering. Thanks, dickheads. <laughs> oh. Flurgle Hinge says, should have let us river you. And chaos chants, war on blue, war on blue, war on blue, war on blue. Okay. Okay, all right. Council introduction. Let's get this out of the way, shall we? To the Chancellor says, now that you're the monarch, your first duty is to meet with the Council of Nobles. We're already well acquainted, actually, Chancellor. Thank you very much. Commander Vimes has done a super chat saying, I have to hand it to you, even Vetinari wouldn't have done that. Well, uh, Vetinari wouldn't have been forced by anyone to do anything other than what Vetinari wanted to do. <sighs> Wish there'd been another option, like in going postal. Um, your nobles hail from across the kingdom, the desolate east, the desolate east, uh, the wealthy coast, and of course, the scorching south. Introduce yourself, introduce yourself to the grandees of the south. I'll do my favourites first. May the ninth God bless your reign, your majesty. I trust you will conduct yourself with honour and faith, says Grandee Hembla, Hem, Hemba. Introduce yourself to the Counts of the East, sure, why not? An honour to finally make your acquaintance, your grace, says Countess Yuki. May you escape the doom that befell your predecessor. And the patricians of the coast. Uh, wait, no. No. Oh, Lord Patrician John R. Um, I was about to say Hannah Axelson, but that's because Hannah Axelson wrote Praise the Ninth. Uh, a pleasure, your esteemed highness. I hope to see our kingdom prosper and grow wealthy under your reign. And with that, the introductions are done. All right. Uh, Marcus Cox has done a super chat saying, A Star Wars book that follows the crew from Fallen Order. There was a bit about Grease cooking having a ton of salt. It reminded me of your Let's Play causing me to laugh so hard I had to put the book down. Just salting the food endlessly in that cutscene. That's surely a knowing nod. That's brilliant. I'm very pleased. Thank you for letting me know about that, Marcus, and for the uh, super chat. Amy Little has done a super chat saying, I hope you are well. I came out as, as non-binary at the end of 2022. You're a big help with me coming out. I just found out I'm seven weeks pregnant. My parent title will be Nommy, not plus Mummy. Have fun in the river. Emmy, congratulations. That's wonderful news. Uh, both on, uh, you know, realising you're, you're non-binary and also being pignat. Um, I hope I hope the pregnancy goes really, really well and you have a, a, a safe and happy delivery. Um, congratulations. That's wonderful. I didn't go in the river. So there. Right. You sigh and sit back. Is this what the council is like? No wonder your father told you to avoid the throne at all costs. Wait, what? My father told me to avoid the throne? Oh, great. Tremendous. Alright, the path to victory. 
Heir and ambition. The monarch must acquire an heir and complete their ambition to win a game. A spouse is useful, but not necessary. Complete your ambition before a scheme or rebellion usurps you, or before you lose all authority, treasury, or stability. Your Majesty, the first few years of your reign are the most difficult, says my spy master. Yes, I'm starting to believe that. Um, you're new and unproven. The nobles of the council will scheme against you, hoping to kick you off the throne and put their own puppet claimant in your place. How can I stop them? To defeat their schemes, you must secure an heir and prove that you are worthy of the crown by completing an ambition. My question is this. When you die, how do you hope the kingdom will remember you? As a conqueror, goal military. As the greatest monarch who ever lived, goal authority. As the architect of a new golden age, goal trade. As a peacekeeper, goal stability. As the parent of the nation, goal farming. As a saint, goal faith. Last time I tried peacekeeper and you all went absolutely bananas. So I'm going to say, as the parent of the nation. Interesting. Are you concerned for the welfare of the commoners? Yes, because some of them will have infections now. Uh, or are you just hoping for a favourable passage in the history books? I suggest over the next few years you focus on improving the king's overall farming as much as possible. Right. I just feel like that one is going to be harder for you all to sabotage. We'll see. Once you have an heir, I will return to discuss how your ambition is progressing. Good luck, your majesty. What the fuck? That's the most spymaster thing a spymaster has ever said. I will return as soon as you have acquired a child. <laughs> Away they go. Right. End season. Now that you've played all events, advance the game by clicking end season. End season. Bong! Each region will now vote for one of three randomly selected schemes. Schemes are made up of three stages with spe 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 specific stats requirements. Passing all three ske scheme stages. Passing all three scheme stages places the region's claimant on the throne, winning the game. A proper cup of coffee in a proper copper coffee pot. Right, Dimitri! My fellow counts, in ancient times, the East was its own proud kingdom. We can bring back those days of glory, but not while the false monarch wears the crown. <laughs> What's wrong with my mouth? So much. 30 seconds remaining. Doppelganger, which is lowest defiance. Ascension, which is lower own faith. Or possession, lower own defiance. Open to the Counts of the East only. Baddy Wronglegs wants to <laughs> assault God. Possession. Lower own defiance. Possession seems to be coming way out in the lead. Ding ding! Alrighty. There we go. Voting has closed. Possession. Goal. Lower own defiance. The Count's defiance is only one to begin with. Alright, fine. Well done, eight nobles. Nice switch says Baddy Wronglegs is on a solo quest to kill and become god. The Count's plan to, su the Count's plan to summon a demon to possess the monarch putting them totally under their control. First they must lull the monarch into a false sense of security. To advance their scheme, they must lower their defiance to four or less, fewer, in two seasons. But your defiance is one. Fuck! Fuck! Scheme Grandees. Asimo. A false pretender occupies the throne while my claim is ignored. Grandees of the sun. This is a stain on our honour. We must not allow it to go unanswered. Do they want to do a bit of subterfuge, intimidation, or a witch hunt? <sighs> I'm so screwed. I'm so screwed. Hairwire says their royal highness is suddenly feeling how screwed they are. So screwed. In just two seasons, unless the counts vote against themselves, or unless... 
the rest of us can pull off something amazing, their goal is going to advance. Meanwhile, it's a witch hunt for the grandees, who, with a faith of seven at the start, are already in the position to have the highest faith. Voting has closed. Eleven nobles voted for witch hunt. Goal, highest faith. There's all sorts of heresy in the capital, and the grandees intend to expose it. First, they must ensure the south is beyond reproach. To advance their scheme, the grandees must be the region with the highest faith in three seasons. Well, nailing it. Ah, the patricians. Fellow patricians of the coast, my claim to the... of Sam the Eagle. It is the British way. Fellow patricians of the coast, my claim to the throne is far more legitimate than that of Monarch Johnny. I don't know where it's going now. Something must be done. <laughs> oh, dear. Monopoly, raise own trade. Conspiracy, lower treasury. Or corruption, lower authority. Ah, yes. It seems they've caught up. They've, uh... Sounds like they've uh, caught on to the whole vote for the thing that you're already winning game. Yep. Monopoly. That's your game, is it? Bad board game. 14 nobles voted for Monopoly. Raise your own trade. Well, congratulations, everyone, to being a third of the way to winning. <laughs> the patricians plan to privatise this entire damn kingdom. First, they must build up their industry. Too close to home. Too close to to home. To advance their scheme, the patricians must raise their trade to five or more in four seasons. Here you can review the region's schemes and their claimants. When you have an heir, they will appear on the right of this page. If your reign ends abruptly, the nobles will vote for the next monarch. The vote is between the two regions with the highest combined stats and your heir if you have one. So here's Dimitri, my long-lost nibbling. Here's Asimo, my embittered step-uncle, or stuncle. Uh, and Drusilla, the ambitious vassal. Warning, the monarch currently has no heir. Okie dokie. I'm feeling fine about this. Let's end the season. <laughs> nice, which says, Johnny, you need to acquire a child. Toot sweet. I do. Right. A fishy wedding? The Honor Guard or the Gossamer Shield? A fishy wedding! Your Majesty, the Archduke of Saal has invited you to his forthcoming wedding. Your attendance would help shore up relations between our two great nations. Depths below, great nation! The Isle of Saal is nothing more than a nest of pirates and cutthroats, says Lord Patrician Colin of the Patricians of the Coast. <laughs> And I heard it isn't a proper marriage anyway, says Lord Patrician Indomitable X. The Archduke is marrying a fish. The groom is a finfolk, one of the denizens of the sea, perfectly sapient and actually amphibious. This I did not see coming. Uh, Tightly Radius has done a super chat saying, Did you know that Monopoly was originally made to promote Georgism or the single tax movement? It was originally called the Landlord's Game, wasn't it? Hang on a minute. Hang on, is this a pun that I've missed? Did you know that Monopoly was a, a, made to promote Georgism or the single tax movement? Yes, it was. Oh, Monopoly is in having a single... Uh, um. Wait, that's true? I, hmm, I'm confused. A little less tiny moth says marry it. Right. Well, the church doesn't agree with man a man marrying a fish. We mustn't legitimise this farce by allowing the monarch to attend. Okay. Set laws for voting. Of course the monarch should attend the wedding, which will put up defiance, down faith and up stability. 
The monarch will not attend but will send their warm regards, which will tank faith, condemn the wedding and sever diplomatic ties with the Isle of Saal, which will raise faith and lower defiance. I can select my preferred voting option. Aiden folks says we've got Johnny so paranoid about puns. I know, right? Uh, well, I would like... I just, I just don't... Mm, let's, I'm going to say we should condemn the wedding and sever diplomatic ties with the Isle of Sal. Because, you know what, like, if somebody wants to fuck a fish, great, good for them. But that doesn't mean I have to go to their party, you know? Um, Never Likely has done a super chat saying, Hi Johnny and Skelly Pals, please take these coins as my tax for showing up late. Also, hopefully this is enough coin for you to tell my best friend Caitlin that Kenzie thinks she is amazing and they love her platonically. <clears throat> Hark! Caitlin! Thou art beloved platonically uh, of Kenzie. Kenzie thinks that thou art amazing. And that is why they have professed their platonic love for you via the medium of me, a dingus. <laughs> I hope that... I hope that... Uh, I hope that works. Never likely. Thank you very much for the super chat. Um, right. Shock Monkey has done a super chat saying, playing while editing my radio show. Stay awesome. That's awesome. Um, good luck on the edit. You know what? I'm not going to I'm not gonna indicate a choice. Um, the Indigo Witch says, I'm pro the fish marriage, but I want to win. Well, okay. Anonymous says you should attend the wedding just for the halibut. Amazing. Very good. Let's just vote. Come on, then. Well, looks like I'm going to watch a fish wedding. It's relatively close. Wow. The patricians are super into this not going to the wedding thing. They are voting as a united block. Amaya Akane says, love wins. It does. Let's go watch a man kissing a fish. Hmm. Well then. One sec. Okie dokie. Should the monarch attend the wedding? Blah, blah, blah. Of course the monarch should attend the wedding. 24 nobles voted for that. Excellent! The wedding is scheduled for next year. I'll inform the Archduke that you shall be delighted to attend. Hrmph! This kingdom is sliding into madness, says the High Inquisitor. Piss off, High Inquisitor. Emma Benton says, oh, so you'll go to a fish wedding, but you won't go in a lake. I see how it is. Yeah! When it's announced that you will attend the wedding, the patricians are naturally scandalised. The coast defiance is now aloof. All right. But the peasants, sentimental as ever, are in favour of your decision. Public opinion turns against the overly strict church. In the coast, faith is now irreverent. In the east, it's now sceptical. In the south, it's now steadfast. And in the kingdom, it's now stable. Well, the kingdom is now stable. All right, cool. Buddy Wrongleg says, The patricians who all voted for it are scandalised that it was what was voted for. <laughs> right, let's have a look at a Gossamer Shield, shall we? Premium Nobles. This is a player who bought King of the Castle. They can set their customizations, get access to special outfits, and appear more often in storylines. Count Baddy Wronglegs. Hello. Your Grace, heed my plea, says Count Baddy Wronglegs. The great tragedy of our time has befallen the East. You ran out of capes? How droll. Worse than that, worse even than that, I fear, an order of once great knights has fallen into disrepute. Con24 says, is Johnny doing any better this time? Oh no. Oh no, not at all. It's the order of Gossamer, Sh the Gossamer Shield, your highness. They were once the greatest of the knightly orders to serve the counts. Their virtues were extolled by bards across the land. Tales that would make a troll weep. Yes, I remember. This song, the boys are back in town. 
That was about the Order of the Gossamer Shield. But they've been brought low. They're working as glorified bounty hunters for the coast. This is a stain on the honour of the East. Alright. I mean, gotta pay the bills. But whatevs. Nonsense. Our military has suffered some setbacks recently, so we hired Gossamer Security to keep order. For a pretty penny, I might add. The coast military is now mediocre. Uh, and some patricians' wealth has decreased. Oh, it's Lady Patricia Alexander de Grossa. Uh, Gossamer Security has been solving the problems we have been solving the problems we want solved and kicking the buttocks we want kicked. Blood and stars. Gossamer Security? How has it come to this? These are knights, not mercenaries, and they need reminding of a little thing called chivalry. Orthogonalist says, I lost 300 monetary units. Sorry about it. Um, right. Please, Your Majesty, I beg the council to be reasonable. Oh, they won't. They won't be reasonable, baddy wrong legs. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Should the Order of the Gossamer Shield be recalled and reformed to its former glory, we can either recall the Order and restore its, its courtly dignity, which would cost money and would be bad for farming and stability and defiance will go up and down, we can invest in Gossamer Security to help protect the coast, which would cost more money, would be very good for trade, and Defiance would also like... Boo -doo -doo -doo. We could hire the Order to join the Palace Watch, which would cost shitloads of money, but be great for authority, or we could ignore the situation, which would be good for military, uh, I would put Defiance way up, and would, take, would tank authority. I'm going to say we're not recalling the order to restore its courtly dignity. There. Veto. I veto it. Because you know what I like? Farming. <laughs> Here we go. Voting's open. The patricians are, unsurprisingly, um, planning to boost themselves by investing in Gossamer security. Manuel Rivera says, have we deposed our lovely Johnny yet? Not yet, but they're working on it. Currently, everyone is set to advance their, their agenda. So, whoops-a-daisy. Continue. Voting has now closed. We have voted to invest in Gossamer security to help protect the coast. I don't think the Counts are going to like that, but in fairness, they're trying to summon a demon to possess me. So... Seventh take us, this is an insult to the culture and heritage of the East. Well, maybe if you didn't put so much stock into just one order of knights, you'd have more culture and heritage. The East? How do you like, how do you like me now? You probably don't. The Treasury's gone down 600. Defiance is now aloof in the East. Which is good for me, because you want low Defiance. The Patricians are pleased to have retained Gossamer Security's help in keeping the peace. Their trade is now opulent. And Defiance is now cordial. So that's good. Right, let's talk about the Honor Guard, shall we? Marshal, now that you are monarch, you... <clears throat> excuse me. Now that you are monarch, you need personal protection. Why, I could plunge my sword into your heart right now. Could I not? I suppose so. Ah, Doc Zock has uh, summoned the Blood Pair. It looks much the same as it did earlier on in the stream... But it's still disturbing, because what does it look like? A big piece of fruit with uh, very long arms as it repeatedly thrusts a ceramic vessel toward the screen, sloshing about a bunch of blood. Tremendous. Uh, you, <clears throat> you need an honor guard to keep you safe from such dangers, Your Majesty. Unfortunately, this is a political decision. What are my options? Each region offers a selection of elite guards. The Counts with Knights of the Order of the Drowned Royals. The Patricians with Champion Gladiators from the Arena. 
and the grandees offer the fiercest battle nuns from the Sisterhood of Steel. That sounds metal as fuck. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they called her Babylon, has done a super chat, saying, Afternoon, scale of friends. I'd love to stay, but there is also... Also, there is lemon drizzle to be made, so I'll be back to vod squad it. Yum, yum, yum. Well, I hope uh, by the time you get back to this point in the stream, they called her Babylon, uh, you have a delicious lemon drizzle cake. Um, thank you very much for the super chat, and uh, yeah, I hope you're very, very well. Right, here we go. Let's see what we get. Think carefully, your majesty. These guards' loyalty will be divided between you and their region. Of course, you could just hire foreign mercenaries. They'd be loyal to coin, above all. Bastard. Tell me about the Eastern Knights. The Order of the Drown... Oh, the Order of the Drown Rose are highly respectable. They'll understand palace etiquette, but it's been years since they fought an actual battle. They mostly write poems these days. Tell me about the Coastal Gladiators. A gang of low-born crooks who've turned themselves into celebrities through their skill at chopping each other to bits. They're vain and selfish and French. <laughs> Their skill in battle is undeniable, but can you trust them? What foreign mercenaries do you suggest? A band of fearsome fighters from the Tatalans called the Battle Bitten Brethren. B -b 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 they specialise in bodyguard work, but they're costly, and hiring foreigners will be considered an insult to all the regions. Tell me about the Southern Battle Nuns! Terrifying warriors, and they've sworn a vow of silence, so at least they won't spill state secrets. Look at them! Rad! But their faith and loyalty is to the church above all. Even your safety. This sounds like a terrible decision. I've made my decision. I await your verdict with bated breath. Your majesty. I don't need an honor guard. Oh, I could just refuse. Wait, hang on a minute. So, ah, shit. The counts are from the east, aren't they? So we're not doing the east. Coastal Gladiators. The Coastal Gladiators sound quite fun. Wraith Fines. <laughs> That's a good name. Wraith Fines is on a super chat saying, Hi Johnny, popping in at work. I'll catch you on VOD Squad tonight. Glad you're back. It's nice to be back, Wraith. Um, thank you very much for a super chat uh, and making me giggle um, with, uh, with your excellent username. Right. <sighs> the Coastal Gladiators... Coastal Gladiators. <laughs> the Defiance in the East is rising! Uh, defiance has risen in the South. The Coast is now loyal to me. Allegedly. I will make the arrangements at once. The Gladiators arrive a few weeks later. The men are bare-chested and the women underdressed, eager to show off their bodies as much as their weaponry. They gather behind your throne and begin oiling themselves up. Now this is the kind of kingdom I want to be running. Welcome to my sexy, sexy kingdom. Great. Uh, that's that. Let's end the season. It, buildings. Ah, nobles can use their wealth to bid on any building in any region, each of which affects a stat. This is done through an auction where only the two most funded buildings are chosen. When an auction is open, nobles can fund through the browser in increments of 100. When you're ready, hit start auction to begin the auction. So, listen up everybody. Uh, the Counts could put money in to build an observatory, which would bring their faith down, or a theatre, which would reduce authority. Uh, the Grandees can buy themselves an aqueduct, which would be good for farming. That sounds nice. Uh, or a cathedral, which would be good for faith. Uh, patricians can get themselves a Grand Bazaar, which is good for trade. Or a prison, which is bad for stability. Um, the richest nobles include Baddy Wronglegs, Bobby, Ronnie, Brady376, Knack, Shock, Monkey, Becker, Prof, Dookie, Asher, uh, Aslan, Darkbeard, Sam Vimes, and Dead Boy. Let's see what gets made. Severin Tigers on a super chat saying, I'm watching while playing Rimworld as I can't play along. Will you give us another chance in a new game? Um, yeah, probably. I mean, people do like this. I'm not opposed to playing it again. Let's see. D, the Cathedral, is currently winning. Um, the Grand Bazaar is also doing well. No one wants an aqueduct, do they? Wow. Wow, you really want that cathedral. <coughs> <coughs> 
The Grand Bazaar is also doing well. The theatre's creeping on up, though. <gasps> Looks like we're getting a theatre. That will be bad for authority. Because presumably you're all going to put on plays being like, the king is a poop. Well. You've all put a lot of money in there. Time's up. What are we getting? Buildings funded. A cathedral for the grandees. Thanks in no small part to Brady376 who put in a grand. Uh, also putting in a grand was Jonas in order to uh, build a theatre. Wow. End season. Okay. Ah, finding a spouse. Let's find a spouse. Gonna get me an air. In the twisty passages of your castle, you can avoid your advisors, the nobles, even the spymaster, but there's one person you can't avoid. Your mother! Why haven't you found a spouse yet? It's been almost a year. Disclaimer, that is not what my mother sounds like. I've been busy. Is it really that urgent? But mother, I don't want to get married. I've been busy! You'd better find the time. Don't worry, I'll take the liberty of finding eligible candidates. What is your preference? Men, women, or do you not mind? Um, I am attracted to women. Excellent, I'll send out messages to the most influential noble families in the kingdom. Let's see what they have to offer. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Alex de Grosser says, where is the fish option? I'm not marrying a fish person. A little overbearing. Let's see. Patricians of the Coast, it's Lady Patrician Alexander de Grosser. Your Serene Highness, we're so grateful for Gossamer Security protecting us against the criminals. Excellent, so there's no problem. Lately, they've been throwing their weight around, demanding higher wages, beating up peasants, and hunting on protected lands. What whoa. As soon as we say anything, they claim they're using the only thing they claim they're the only thing shielding the patricians from danger. The worst thing is they're probably right. Challenges. Some choices have uncertain outcomes called <coughs> challenges. These can either be random or based on a stat. The percentage shows the chance of success. So we could leave them... How can the troublesome Gossamer security mercenaries be controlled? Threaten to dock their pay, which has a 50% chance of working. Order them to return to the east or leave them to their bees nace. I'm vetoing, leave them to their bees nace. <sighs> Hannah Axelson, who never misses, in fairness, has done a super chat saying, oh, come on, get real close to that fish noble and codlet. Don't be coy. Very good, Hannah. Right. Captain Shiny says, A, tank the trade. Well, I saw you coming. Start the vote. Order them to return to the east. Oh, no. The counts are all over that because they want their defiance down. We could haddock their pay. It's close. It's bloody close. Oh, that was so close. All right. Amaya Akanis on a super chat saying, Johnny, I ship you and a Welsh person. Welsh person. Welsh person. <laughs> Thank you, Amaya. I mean, I'd be terrified if I married a whale. I'd be very upset. Because I'm afraid of whales, not the country. I used to date a Welsh person, but anyway. Voting is closed. Okay. 29 people. The uh, nobles have voted to order them to return to the east. In fairness, they, they they blew it. They had a cushy job there, and they blew it. 
Uh, CookieCat94 has done a super chat saying, no, Deva... We'll try that again. CookieCat94 has done a super chat saying, no day should ever start at 3 a.m., but it's finally neurology appointment day. How goes the kingdom ruling? The kingdom goes badly for me, and very well for everyone who isn't me. Um, it's going it's to be... It's all going to come crashing down about my ears, possibly with me um, possessed by a demon. So that would be interesting. Um, I'm very glad it's finally Neurology Appointment Day. I hope it all goes well. Um, I, you know, I imagine you might be a bit nervous, but like, it's you know, it's going to be good to to have that appointment and hopefully get some answers. And also, like, all you need to do is be there, you know. So good luck. Um, I'm sorry your day's starting at 3 a.m., but yeah, I hope it all goes very, very well. Emma Benton says you could have just gone in the lake instead, but no. Okay, number one, Emma Benton, it's a river. And number two, we already did that and it went badly for me. So I'm sorry if I seemed reticent to get thrown bodily into, uh, well, a body of water a second time. Um, but three, you didn't all have to, like, demand everyone in the kingdom cuts their hand and smears blood on my boots. You really... Everyone went wild. It wasn't my choice. It was yours. Stop blaming me for what you did. CookieCat94 says a river is just a long lake. <laughs> uh, right. Overcome with relief to have the, have the difficult mercenaries out of their hair, the patricians raise the council's good judgement. The coast defiance can't go any lower. They may have lost their protectors, but they'll stockpile gold in their coffers at least until the brigands return. Their military is now inadequate, but some patricians' wealth has increased. Uh, meanwhile, the Gossamer security mercenaries return to their eastern homeland, where they provide solid protection for the counts. They may not be as honourable as Count Baddy Wronglegs would like, but they get the job done. Your military is now strong. Are you, are you mad about it, though? Is your defiance going up as well, by any chance? Damn. Shit. That's annoying. Well, let's see about an island rising. Nina says, Hi, can only stop by briefly, but I was wondering if you'll play any more Beyond the Pale. Really love that stream. Yes, I would like to very much. Uh, we'll definitely do that. Um, in the next few weeks. I really want to play Dredge, but I'm not sure when it's out. It's out toward the end of the month. Anyway. Uh, Lord Patrician Colin. Colin says, Your August Majesty, Your Serene Highness, something most strange has occurred in the Ghost Sea. A new island has risen halfway between our shores and the Isle of Sal. The Finn folk raised it from the depths using their weird ocean magic. Okay. Ah, March 30th, at least on the Switch, says Emma. Thank you. We'll play it, we'll play it at the end of the month then, I guess. It's true, Your Majesty. The Finfolk raised the island to celebrate the marriage of their prince, the Archduke of Saal. They will gift it to him on the day of the ceremony. This is terrible... Sorry. This is terrible news. The island is... is, is this is terrible news. That island is of immense strategic importance. We can't let it fall into Saalish hands. By the blood of our people are your lands kept safe. Okay. What can be done about the new island that has appeared as a result of the Salish Archduke's upcoming wedding to a Finn folk? We could send the monarch, that's me, to conduct secret negotiations with the Finn folk. The monarch shall attend, shall just attend the wedding as planned. We could pay a wizard to sink the island back into the sea, or we could send the monarch to seduce the Finn folk prince, <laughs> sabotaging the wedding. Well. I can't veto anything, uh, and I think we all know which way this is going to go, so let's just vote. Let's just go for it. And away it goes. By an absolutely massive margin, I'm being sent to seduce the Finfolk Prince, sabotaging the wedding. That is a margin of almost, what, five? Five times anything else? <sighs> well, guess I'm going to go screw a fish. Voting has closed.
Oh, am I at a cane? Says we're helping you obtain a soul air. S O L E. Absolutely incredible. Incredible. <sighs> Who MD21 says C juice? C juice? Is that anything? <laughs> right, let's send the monarch to seduce the Finn folk. I just love the idea that the council convened. It's like, our marshal is worried that an island of great strategic importance is being raised close to our lands and handed to another nation. We must do something about this, one way or the other. Yes, my lord! You must fuck your way out of this! You must go over there and smooch! And kiss and coddle and... And, and screw your way to solving this diplomatic crisis. The only way, the only way we could possibly solve this crisis is with your penis, sire. Barry Wrongleg says, off to get a cod piece. Yep. All right. Here goes, here goes my genitals. Capital idea. Sorry, capital idea, says the marshal. What? No way. You want me to sleep with the fishes? Very good. Um, <clears throat> Baz McStay says, ain't no sex like council sanctioned sex. <laughs> Egads. Uh, hello, Baz. Um, Barry is a good friend of mine, and I actually appeared on his podcast, Worst Foot Forward, recently. We did a live show. Um, uh, I'll drop a link to it. Worst Foot Forward. Hang on. Lipsin. Boop. Uh, I was asked to run an RPG in five minutes or under um, at, at this podcast recording. And you know what? It went bloody well. So, yeah. Bookmark that. Anyway. Um, well, I, I may as well lean into this. So, I have always found the Finn folk appealing. A silence falls over the council. The nobles glance at each other, coughing and adjusting their collars. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going along with the plan and now everyone's upset. Oh, they want to fuck a fish. Well, if well, you're unattached and you'd make a far better match for this finfolk prince than the Archduke of some rainy, rainy little island, what's the harm? Very well, I'll seduce the sexy, sexy fish man. We all admire your sacrifice, your august majesty. Yes, yes, it's a terrible thing. I do. A terrible, sexy thing. A terrible, scintillating, sensual thing that I go to do. <laughs> Preparations begin for your clandestine visit to one of the Finfolk's undersea villages. Your Chancellor has heard of magic reeds that allow the bearer to breathe underwater, but such a thing will take weeks to track down. Please don't let me die on the way down to fuck a fish, man. At least that gives you time for you to pray for her for your underwater visit and buy some waterproof roses. Alright. Matt Ferguson says, He said, do you like fish sticks? <laughs> Titan Uranus says, So how will history remember you as a monarch? Welp. We're going to find out. There's the frozen wastes in the north. Here's the Isle of Sal. That's where I'm off to fuck a fish man. <laughs> um, let's end the season, shall we? Look, if I'm going to if I'm going to be possessed by a demon, I want to have sex with at least one fish person before it happens, you know? Uh <clears throat> the counts and the crown. Oh yes, here we go. Hidden in a labyrinth beneath an eastern castle, a pair of counts meet to speak of their schemes against the monarch. The Chancellor, says Count Becker, sent me a fruit basket last week to thank us for our efforts in helping the crown. It's working! Our reputation is secure. Uh, Dimitri, our problem now is the Archbishop. His beady little eyes will be focused on us if we are not careful. You must evade him at all the costs. For the next stage of their scheme, the Counts must lower their faith to four or less in four seasons. 
Well, their faith is three, so sit tight to the counts. Oh, no. Taxation. You may collect a common tax or target a specific region. This would have been really handy earlier if I could have taxed the Counts of the East into being really defiant. But here we go. Taxing a region will increase their defiant stat and decrease noble wealth. Hmm. Hmm. The Grandees may make 500 wealth from a series of canny investments. The other nobles gain 200 wealth. What if I taxed everybody? Can I only tax one? You can take a small tax from the Kingdom's Commoners or tax one region's nobles. The last one, okay. Let's do a common tax. Common tax! Ooh, actually, I mean... Bloody hell, the grandees are loaded, aren't they? Well, I've done it now. Oh, well. Whoops, I should have taxed the grandees. Okie dokie. Visiting the Finfolk. Eligible options. Heretical discovery. Well, listen. It's nice that my mother's works to try and find me an heir. That's great. But going and having sex with a fish man is going to be a lot harder if I'm, like, betrothed to someone. I will feel guilty about it. So we can consider this, like, one last fling before I settle down. Um, but also there's a heretical discovery. Sad Boy Kenma says, oh, this is a super chat, Fish people, sex, and demons. What did I jump in on? Just a, just an average Thursday here on YouTube.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. Um, let's do... Heretical discovery first. Amaya Kane says, Johnny, don't be a self fish lover. In incredible. All right. Heretical discovery. Your esteemed highness, I bring troubling news, says the High Inquisitor. If you say it's troubling, then it must be. Nope, someone took the ninth name in vain again. Not quite, your highness. A group of individuals in the East are meeting in secret to preach heretical teachings and engage in rituals. They are worshippers of the deposed gods. They believe that the eight will one day return to cast down the ninth god and all his followers. Oh, it's Age of Sigmar. In other words, they are devil worshippers. Regrettably, I require the council's permission to launch a proper investigation. Otherwise, my inquisitors would have destroyed the cult before it had a chance to spread. I can either hold a vote on the matter, tank faith by saying it's what not worth our time, or just give them permission. Forget the nobles, I give you my express permission, which I can't do for some reason. Which is annoying, because I'd like to. I don't really want to tank faith, because it's just helping everyone. I'll hold a vote on the matter. Why not? Do we send inquisitors to the east to investigate the cult? Good for faith, bad for stability. Deny the inquisition access to the east, bad for east, bad for faith. Or repeal the law that prevents the high inquisitor from investigating at will. Which would be good for faith. It would increase defiance. It would be good for my authority, but it would be bad for my stability. Gonna veto that. I don't want to give the Inquisitor the right to investigate at will. That's bad. Um, <clears throat> Garina Rain has done a super chat saying, I'm laughing so hard my dog is genuinely concerned about my breathing. Perfect stream to counter a rubbish mental health day. I'm glad I could help, Garina. Sometimes, you know, things get on top of us and I'm sorry that you're you're feeling rubbish, but if I can help, even just a little bit, by fucking a fish man, then it's my pleasure. A, a theoretical fish man. Figuratively fucking a fish man. Anyway, right. Start the vote. <clears throat> are we sending inquisitors or are we denying them access to the East? Unsurprisingly, the Counts in the East are voting quite strongly against the Inquisition coming to their, their doors. Looks like there's going to be an, uh, an investigation. Alrighty. Off they go. Uh, voting is closed. 
send Inquisitors into the East to investigate the cult. <coughs> Excuse me. The High Inquisitor and her followers are swift as they are ruthless. Within a month, the fetid corpses of the heretics hang from the battlements of Dobi Tuk, the town where the cult had begun. The East is now dutiful in faith. Um, and the kingdom's stability is teetering. Shit. Okay. Well, listen, it's been a long day for all of us. Why don't we unwind by absolutely railing a fish, man? <laughs> oh, that hurt. That stability really hurt. Ugh. <clears throat> the Finn folk send a stagecoach made from a giant clam pulled by seahorses. How very yonic. You equip your magic breathing reed and hop inside. The clam carriage. <laughs> the, cl <laughs> the clam carriage plunges back beneath the waves and you are whisked down into the murky depths. A few hours later, you arrive at an undersea citadel of kelp woven huts. That is a long journey for a booty call. Um, give me a second. I need to take off my jumper because is it me or is it getting steamy in here? <clears throat> okay. Haywire says, don't forget to eat some oysters first, Johnny, as long as it's not offensive to them. Well, while oysters are allegedly an aphrodisiac, um, I'm allergic to them, so I shouldn't be doing that, really. Um, nothing sexier than having me break out in hives and be sick. Um, right. Their prince meets you at a grand table formed of knotted coral. Tiny finfolk spawnlings swim around your legs as you sit. Okay. Neck of the kitty says, I'm at work. I'm really trying to hold it together. <laughs> Greetings, your... I mean, you wouldn't kick his ass out of bed, would you? Come on. He's like Prince... Is it Prince Sidon in um, Breath of the Wild that everyone wanted to get it on with? <laughs> Haywire says, Johnny, don't tell the upstart nobles how best to poison you. Well, I don't feel like I've given them much. Like, the best way to poison me is probably poison. Never likely says, okay, I get it. John Rice says, oh my, he's hot. Everbent says, yeah, I get it now, lol. Right? The things I do for the good of this kingdom. Well, this place is amazing. Let's get down to, let's get down to business. Do you like my bum? Ugh, it's cold and wet. Wow, this place is amazing. A whale passes overhead, momentarily dousing you in shadow. Okay. Oh, that actually freaked me out a little bit. Ah, oh. I pictured that far too clearly. I can think of nothing worse than when I'm about to get it on with somebody. A, a whale passing overhead. Awful. Oh. Orthogonalist says, is it a sperm whale? Oh. Okay, we're fine, we're fine. Alex de Grosso has done a super chat saying, Koi travel in groups of four for protection. During an, a during an attack, Koi A, B, and C swim away so that all that's left is the decoy. Genuinely pretty good. Okay. All right. We're good, we're good, we're good. So you're here to discuss, discuss my betrothal to Archduke Shomo and the island I'm giving him as a dowry. May I ask, why do you have to give him a dowry? First of all, I must... Con offer my congratulations. Whoops, I just dropped a big bag of pearls. Could you pick them up for me? More like fine folk, am I right? A wooga? Or this new island could cause a war between your future husband and I. I mean, more like fine folk, am I right? A wooga feels like the right thing to say. I'm not good at flirting, so yep. Your clumsy attempt at seduction is beneath the dignity of your office. I am to be married soon, remember? I have no more time for your foolish games. Goodbye. Your clam coach spirits you back to the surface. As you wade onto the beach, you gasp for breath. Air never tasted so good. I'm genuinely disappointed. More like fine folk. Awooga! <laughs> Come on, we had to say it. We had to say it. 
I'm so bad at flirting in real life, genuinely. I mean, it's been a long time since I've, you know, tried to flirt with somebody new. But I'm not good at it. Dr. Branger says, dude is faithful, how can you be mad? Because I wanted to bone him. <sighs> Cookie Cat 94 says, at least you rode his clam cart, that's something. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah Kitchen says, you did have to say it in fairness. Thank you. All right. So how did it go, Your Majesty? Did you successfully seduce the fish man? I tried, but it didn't go well. Well, that's a shame, I suppose. The Chancellor listens intently as you describe your conversation with the Finfolk Prince. Don't tell him. Most unfortunate, Your Majesty. The wedding will go ahead after all. At least you tried. More like fine folk. A wooga. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say something ending in a wooga to my to my spouse and see how that goes. <clears throat> Let's see. Hello. I hope your day is going well. Kira Cox says all in caps. No, don't, Johnny. I'm going to do it. Hope your day is going well. Just wanted to say you have a cute butt. All caps. A wooga. Smiley emoji. There you go. I've sent it. It says a wooga. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> Eligible options. Oh, good. Yes, let's try and find a new spouse. You do what you have to do, Johnny. Okay, haven't had a uh, haven't, haven't had a reply yet. Funnily enough, I have found three potential matches for you. One eligible young woman from each of the kingdom's three regions. Choose wisely. You'll be securing a powerful alliance. Yes, yes, I know. And a partner for life to have and to hold. Don't forget. What if I don't want to marry any of them? A partner for life to have and to hold. Don't forget. I suppose so. But the alliance comes first. Thanks, Queen Mother. The mother leads you to the great hall, where she's arranged three portraits on easels. For now, each is covered by a cloth. Wait, I don't even get to meet them? There's no time for sentiment, you just need a match that befits your station and suits your political needs. She whisks away the cloth from the first portrait. Oh shit. <laughs> I just got a text from my mum saying, you're on good form, good to see. <laughs> Hi mum. Whoops a daisy. Ah <sighs> oh dear. Mum says love you, Johnny. Hi mum. Oh god. Sorry I talked so much about fucking a fish person. <clears throat> Transgamer27 has done a super chat saying, just wanted to pop in and ask that all you LSP Canadians sign the petition to all uh, all trans and MB people to seek asylum, uh, asylum in Canada. Uh, yeah, a very, very good point, uh, Transgamer27. Um, if you are in Canada, uh, please do sign the petition um, to allow trans and non-binary people to seek asylum in Canada because it is an extremely scary time for trans people in America right now. And I, to be honest with you, it feels like worldwide. The UK is becoming increasingly transphobic as well. Uh, and it's awful. Right. Um, let's have a look at some portraits. This is Valentina, the eldest daughter of the Eastern Bugs the, ca Bugs the Casual Dynasty. Forgive the snooty expression, I'm sure that's caused by an errant brushstroke. She had a laboratory installed in her castle and spends most of her time there conducting bizarre experiments. She went missing a while ago, but it turns out she'd accidentally locked herself in her cellar, survived on wine for a week. Bloody hell. She's an intriguing candidate, sure why not. From the coast we have Octavia, the wealthy heiress, eh, 
for the wealthy heiress to Lord Patrician von Karma's estate. She wasn't originally the heiress, but her elder sister had an unfortunate accident. That sounds... schemey. Her interests are typical of the coast, money, 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 and making more of it. She's said to be led by her passions, living in the moment with no thought for her reputation. I like the sound of her. Um, and finally, from the south, Ada, the eldest daughter of the Brady 376 lineage. What happened to the previous 375 Bradys? A quiet and retiring soul, preparing, preferring solitude to the company of others. She dislikes city life and spends most of her time out hunting, with no one but her horse for company. Unfortunately, she lacks the common touch. The peasants have some terrible nicknames for her. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about it the grandees, but I cannot bring myself to marry a horse girl. I just can't do it. Titan Uranus has done a super chat saying, Hi Johnny's mum, you have raised a very well behaved child. <laughs> yes, and also me. <laughs> Don't uh, look over. What do you think? Of course, by picking a candidate, you'll anger the other regions, but you'll gain a lifelong alliance. Ah. <sighs> I have made my decision. The thing is, Valentina of the East sounds pretty legit. Like, smart, drank wine for a week and didn't die. Which bodes well for, you know, their, their longevity. If I pick if I pick the Lady of the Coast, she sounds pretty rad, actually. I think I'd get on with her. Let's take Octavia of the Coast. Defiance can't go lower. The East Defiance is now insolent. And the South is grumbling. The East has the highest military. So maybe I shouldn't have put their Defiance up. But it's probably fine. Mum says, Hi all, I'm going now. More work to do. See you soon, I hope. Well behaved. Thanks, Mum. Bye. Love you. <laughs> Okay, let's get back to talking about fish fucking. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> God damn it. All right. Let's end the season. A wooga! <clears throat> in a distant castle. Ah, yes, here we go. In a picturesque castle overlooking the southern city of Calebra, two grandees lie back to enjoy the sun. Praise be, whispers of our plan have reached the peasants, and they are in an uproar. They call for the sins of the monarch to be laid bare. The south's faith is now fervent. Thanks to Grandee the Indigo Witch. Everyone's saying the Counts are trying to induct the monarch into an immoral cult of um, of uh, blood drinkers. What more could we ask for? Uh, we have the High Inquisitor on our side. But we must also sow dissent among the other regions. We won't succeed alone. Sorry. For the next stage of their scheme, the Grandees must raise other regions' defiance to a combined total of at least eight, or ensure another region begins rebellion in three seasons. All right, looks like we're trying to tank defiance, which is going to be hard, because everything raises defiance somewhere. Um, the Kesling has done a super chat saying, I feel like you deserve something for all the things you are currently helping to distract me from. Please don't let chat lead you too astray. Um, thank you, the Kesling. Unfortunately, chat does nothing but lead me astray. Um, but hey... How? Um, thank you very much for the super chat. I'm, I'm sorry that you are in need of distraction from things. Happy to oblige, but I do hope things uh, start looking up for you very, very soon. Um, all right, so the grandees have three... Aha! You can adopt a new law that alters how voting is run. Okay, one law. You can only adopt one new law at a time and have a maximum of three laws to use. So, reverse voting. Nobles must vote for their least favourite option, and the option with the least votes will pass. Fewest! Stop the count. The timer is set to 15 seconds, and the vote will automatically close once the timer is over. That doesn't sound fun for you. Call for unity. 
Uh, what, plus one stability if more than 50% of nobles vote for any one option. I'm going to take that one because that will be easy to manipulate. Um, great. Let's end the year. An island wedding? The royal wedding? Disquiet in the south. Ugh, wedding season, am I right? Now, would it be more awkward if I go to the island wedding as an unmarried monarch, given that I tried to have sex with the prince? Or would it be better if I turned up with my wife? I'll probably seem less lecherous if I'm there with my wife. As long as I don't shout a wooga again, I think it'll be okay. Hmm. Turn up married, says the Indigo Witch. Okay. Bo Furlong has done a super chat um, saying, Now that Mama Chiodini is gone, you think you all would have gotten it on like some mammals, or would you have fertilized some eggs fish style? Pro probably both. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, right, let's let's get married. <laughs> let's let's go to the royal wedding. <clears throat> Your wedding to Octavia is naturally the talk of the kingdom. Nobles and peasants alike travel from across the realm to attend. For a week and a day, the capital is one giant party. It feels like you're the only one not taking part. Instead, you're getting ready for the ceremony. Soon enough, you're standing in St. Bertrand's Cathedral with Octavia at your side. Do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? I do! Get down, defiance. Then I pronounce you married in the eyes of the kingdom. Thanks, Archbishop. That was brief. After the wedding, of course, there's a feast. And after the feast of dance, your new wife, Octavia, only dances with obvious reluctance. Hooray! <laughs> okay. Defiance is down. Good. And the kingdom is now stable. Stability is now stable. The first rule of Tautology Club is the first rule of Tautology Club. Um. All right. Samorio so Sunis has just sent a super chat, but it appears not to have worked. Oh, there it is. Samorio so Sunis has done a super chat saying, Hey Johnny, going through a lot in this stream is a welcome respite. Wish me luck for my stand-up gig at 7. Hey, good luck. Stand-up is, um, like, an intimidating thing, but you're going for it, and you have a gig at 7. So I hope it goes brilliantly. I hope no one in the audience is rude. Uh, and I hope you have a bloody lovely time. Do let us know in the future how it goes. Um, I'm sorry that you're going through a lot at the minute, but I'm glad... Again, that I can help by being a very bad monarch with a thing for fish. By the time you find yourself alone with Octavia, it's past midnight and you've never felt more tired. Neither of us asks for this union, but I assure you it can blossom into something of a mutual benefit. Maybe we will fall in love once we get to know each other? I'll just say agreed. Excellent. I hope this alliance proves fruitful indeed. You head to your separate bedchambers. Perhaps you will draw closer in time, but for now your wife is happy to keep you at arm's length. <sighs> Whoops, a daisy. Samorio so Sunni says, it's at UCL, please don't kill me. I'm not going to kill you because UCL exists, the bastards. <laughs> no, I hope it goes really, really well. Tell Jeremy Bentham I, Bentham I said, fuck off. <laughs> uh, anyway. Right. An island wedding. Bloody, bloody wedding season. Your esteemed highness, in a few days you'll be travelling to the Archduke of Sal's controversial wedding. Surely there's a way we could turn this to our advantage. Yes! If I could just find some way to have sex with the groom. <laughs> Jonah Aunt has done a super chat saying, Johnny Stream, my birthday, and buying a house. Awesome. Wow, that's a, yeah, that's a great, um triplet of things um happy birthday and congratulations on buying a house uh, it's the, one of the most stressful things i think a person can do and i hope it all goes very very well yasmin w says tell it's jeremy bentham's stuffed corpse which is a thing yeah exactly they don't have his real head on show anymore though it's locked away in a vault after some people from king's college london took it and played football with it whoops um, but Jonah, thank you very much for the super chat. Congrats on uh, on buying a house and happy, happy, happy birthday. Right, we must forge an alliance with Sal. They are fast ships and with this new island outpost control over most of the ghost sea. Or you could publicly object to this blasphemous union of man and fish. No! 
You can't seriously expect me to, to disrupt the wedding. This is a matter for the council, I believe. Oh god, don't make me say I object. Okay. What should the monarch aim to do at the Archduke of Sal's wedding? Seek an alliance with Sal. Publicly object to the union on religious grounds or just attend the wedding like a normal human being. Plus one stability if more than 50% of nobles vote for any one option. Because I feel gremlin stuff coming from you lot. Never likely says, does anyone object to this union? A wooga! <laughs> The Kesling says a wooga become has a wooga become the new battle cry of the LSPs. I mean, maybe. Okay. I need to think about this. I could veto publicly object to the union on religious grounds. I think I have to. I think I have to do that. Yeah. Do we seek an alliance with Sal or just attend the wedding like a normal human being? Seeking an alliance with Sal is wise. But attending a wedding like a normal human being sounds like fun as well. So. Baddy Wrongleg says, normal human being seems like an anti-fish person statement. Yeah, true. Hannah Axelson says, maybe smooch the fish prince's fiance instead. And a normal human? Boring. All right, we're seeking an alliance with Sal. Voting is closed. Well, the council has spoken. Good luck, your serene highness. Right. We're not yelling a wooga. We're not yelling a wooga. We're not yelling a wooga. Soon the time has come. You board a ship and sail to the newly risen island where the Archduke of Saal is due to marry his finfolk groom. Naturally, Octavia is accompanying you. If she runs off with the fish man, I will be devastated. Let's turn this into an alliance with Saal. If possible, we may as well get something from this chore, says Octavia. Octavia, you are great. I like you a lot. At last, the new island crest the horizon is an empty little rock devoid of vegetation with no buildings except a marquee and a hastily constructed church of the ninth. Sounds rubbish. But it's packed with people, mostly minor nobles of Sal, who welcome you with cheers and bows. You file into the church. Or is that cheers and bows? <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> anyway, right. As the ceremony begins, the Finfolk Prince walks down the aisle while the Archduke of Sal waits with clasped hands. They're both hot. <sighs> Look at that lustrous hair. <sighs> the well-sculpted brows. The rich skin tone. His sense of dress. The breadth of his chest. And just look at this absolute stud. <sighs> Fine. Does anyone here know any lawful impediment to these two people being joined in marriage? I am sitting quietly. I'm, I will be, like, whispering to myself, like, a wooga. A wooga. Then I now pronounce you married, says the priest. That's that, then. Time for a party, says Archduke Shomo. <laughs> Diana, Shadow Piranha, says, Can you forge an alliance with both of them on the basis of, basis of threesomes? It's possible. Everyone crowds into the marquee to get incredibly drunk. As you're making the rounds, chatting and gobbling canapes, you find yourself face to face with the Archduke. Please, please, please tell me that your fiancé, well, your husband now, didn't tell you about the time I yelled a wooga. Your Majesty, thank you for coming. A toast to my new husband and I. Congratulations, I can see you're very much in love, or what possessed you to marry a finfolk? I can see you're very much in love. Well, yes, and the island dowry didn't hurt. Uh, would you be interested in an alliance between Sal and my kingdom? It depends. What do you have to offer me? Gold? Our finest cuisine? Military support? Or, uh, my gratitude? <laughs> Let's see. Trade would be going up. I'll find this quick. But so trade goes up in three of all of these. 
defiance goes up if I say my gratitude, so we don't want that. Let's say our finest cuisine. Hmm, I do love your buttered turnips. <sighs> it's been so long since somebody's complimented my buttered turnips. Rachel Davies has done a super chat saying, A wooga! A wooga! A wooga! Very well, an alliance is born. Now let's enjoy the party. You celebrate long into the night and wake with a thudding headache. When you arrive back at the capital, the council is pleased that you followed their advice. The coast and the south, like me. The east is cordial. This alliance will bring us great fortune, your august majesty. The new island proves to be immensely beneficial for Sal and for you, their new ally. The Archduke is happy to share his trade routes with your merchants. Yes. A wooga. Some patricians' wealth has increased in the coast and the trade is now a monopoly. Uh-oh. Oh, that's bad. For me. Well, whoops. I just like a party. Right. Okay. Disquiet in the south. Wow, Alex Simkin has nearly 2,000 gold. Whoops-a-daisy. Carrie Choice is laughing my ass off. Ah, you saw it. Yeah. Oh, well. At least nobody can rebel, says Flurkle Hinge. Exactly. <clears throat> Grandy Cole says, Your Holiness, my knaves accuse me of hoarding wealth. Me! Worse, they're throwing down their tools and burning their belongings, saying they want to live an ascetic life. Ascetic? And then I should do the same. They want to match their outfits with their decor? I wish I could do that. They want to have more exercise? What nonsense. Wish I could do that. You and the peasants finally have something in common. They don't want to be pinned down by worldly possessions, but burning them is quite the overreaction. The ringleader of this movement is a philosopher called Ortega. She calls herself a voice for the ninth god, and the peasants hang on to her every word. They'll be at my door any moment. Do we send someone to infiltrate their cult, aggressively break up Ortega's meetings, fire the troublemakers, and hire new servants from the coast? Well, I can't veto anything, so I'll set a call for unity and just see what happens. Amaya Akane says, plot twist, ninth god is a demon. Hmm. Okay. Maybe this was a bad one to do a call of unity on, because it's, it's much of a muchness, really, isn't it? I feel like this vote's going to be quite evenly split. Sod it. Yep, I don't get more stability. Rubbish. Oh, well. Ema Rock Rock says ascetic. Thank you. Right. Voting has closed. 18 nobles voted for aggressively break up the meetings. Stability's gone down. The City Watch rushed the next philosophical meeting. Some of the peasants tried to fight, but Ortega tells them to stand down to prevent more violence. Stability is now teetering. Shit. The grandees are very grateful indeed, though there are rumblings of discontent from the peasantry. Defiance can't go lower. All right, let's end that season. This is bad. Yes. In a dingy seaside tavern. Oh, yeah, it's establishing a monopoly. And it was right there. Whoops-a-daisy. In a dingy seaside tavern, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. Harrison Parker says the pronunciation is ascetic. Okay. The coast economy has never been better. We're making more money than I know what to do with. Bollocks. Money breeds money. I've made a series of investments to improve our profits even more, but what do we do with the rest of all this gold? Some patricians' wealth has increased. Time to start buying things, of course. Lands, roads, bridges. We'll buy up the whole kingdom piece by piece, but first the monarch must be in desperate need of our gold. To advance their scheme, the patricians must lower the treasury to 1,500 or less in two seasons. Okay. 
I am a rock. It says, closest first attempt I've heard in a while, Johnny. I am a rock. I am a rock. Rock. Right. Serenity Moon 1976 says, A wooga gold. Oh, they're so rich. Okay. Your Majesty, these upstarts are saying they have... Oh, God, everyone's two-thirds of the way through. Raise the other regions to blah. Okay, so the grandees are in a, are doing badly because defiance is so low. Um, the counts of the east are are pretty close to having their faith where they need it to be, and uh, the patricians of the coast they've got a they've got a scalp eleven hundred coins off me in two seasons. I'm not. We'll see. We'll see. Bring it. A city in flames, a cult rises, or a helping hand. <sighs> Why is it always a cult or a city in flames? Johnny, I had something I wanted to ask of you, says my wife. What can I do for you? As you surely know, I run a very successful jewellers guild back home in the coast. But the current laws are a little restrictive for my trade. Lots of tariffs and regulations. You know how it is. I was hoping you should push for some changes in the council. Eliminate some of the import duties on Ateshi jewels, perhaps. That's corruption, plain and simple. I wouldn't call it that. It's just a helping hand, that's all. Our citizens would surely thank you for it. Forget it, wife! <laughs> well, apologies. Very well, apologies for taking up your time. Well, she took that well, in fairness. She sighs and withdraws. For the next week, she sleeps and takes her meals in another wing of the palace. Never going to get an air. Sod it. Right, well, let's go see about this city in flames, shall we? Grandy Diana. Your Holiness, there's been a terrible fire in the city of Tolivane. Where once there were buildings, there is now a field of smouldering ash. Dozens of peasants have died. What caused this fire? Filled with religious conviction. Okay. The townsfolk seized a travelling wizard and attempted to burn him at the stake for practising dark magic. Oh, it's Shadow Piranha. Hello, Shadow Piranha. He walked out of the city unharmed. The same cannot be said for those who tried to burn them. This is why you never tangle with wizards. I was hoping the council might unlock some funds from the treasury so we could rebuild. Absolutely not! Absolutely not. No, no, no. No, no, no. Absolutely not. No. We are not... We're not bloody tanking our treasury. Not at all. Manuel Rivera says, You know what doesn't burn? Fish people and underwater houses. Just saying. Exactly, Manuel. They're sexy, sexy underwater houses. Looks like we're punishing a wizard. That's not a good idea. Voting has closed. Find and punish the wizard responsible. A wizard named Gordias is deemed responsible for the fire. You send a squad of soldiers to arrest him and bring him in for questioning. He's going to kill them all. The soldiers are found a week later scattered around a field, reduced to bones and ashes. The superstitious town folk whisper that wizards are above the laws of both monarch and god. That's because they are. Okay. The South's military is now weak, but the South is now devout, so Faith has taken a hit as well. Uh, my authority is now credible. Captain Shiny says, wow, we're trying to punish a wizard again. We tried this last time. Yeah, it did not go well, did it? Okay, meanwhile, the grandees who bear the cost of rebuilding grumble that money would have been more appreciated than your ham-fisted attempt at justice. Yes, well, I want to stay on the throne. By the ninth, what is the point of having a monarch in the first place? That, Diana, is treason. Right. A cult rises. Uh, I sure hope it does. Gred dreadful tidings, Your Majesty, it's a disaster. Ortega's followers are in a frenzy. They stormed my manor and took it over. I barely escaped. They say Ortega's bringing the sick there to be healed by her powers if she doesn't burn the place down first. Grandy Cole's wealth has decreased to nothing. Sorry, Cole. Okie dokie. Do we? Pay 
pay the patricians to help to shelter Grandy Cole, send in southern troops to clear out these vandals, which only has a 10% chance of success, Ortega's peasants secured the estate, let them keep it, or have Ortega assassinated, which would be very bad for me. I'm going to set a call for unity, because I reckon this is going to be an absolute landslide in favour of bad things happening to me! Shit. Oh! 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 Come on! No! Uh, and I'm not getting a stability. Damn it. There goes a thousand coins. <sighs> it's hard to be king. Voting has closed, Ed. 21 nobles voted for Have Ortega Assassinated. Little money in the right place sweeps your problems clean away. I need money in the treasury. Well done, the patricians. You've played a blinder there. End that season, baby. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Not again. Okay. It's time to start an auction. All of the patricians are mega wealthy. The counts can build a fortress to increase a military or an observatory for faith. Actually, you can... I mean, these are just things that can be built. There's a monument uh, for the grandees, which will increase authority. A theatre, which will undermine my authority again. Uh, patricians can build a deer park, which is bad for farm. Or a thieves' guild to tanketh the trade. And the eccentric lefty says, Hi, Johnny. Tough day in the throne room office? Oh, yes. Oh, my. I'm not going to be remembered at all. Not as not as the the father of the kingdom. Not as a, a an ardent fishman smoocher. Nothing. Here we go. The counts could absolutely clinch it here, really. If they get that observatory then I'm going to be possessed by a demon soon. <sighs> Hugh says, I have done a return with what happened with the fish smooching. It didn't go well, Hugh. I yelled, more like fine folk, a wooga, and the prince was not impressed. <laughs> Okie dokie. Looks like there's a deer park coming along to really just grind my... Um, my monarch ambitions into the dust and it looks like that observatory is being built so it looks like uh, I'm gonna have a new flatmate soon by which I mean there's going to be a demon living inside of me buildings funded Deer Park John R really helped with that one um, giving 2,700. Willem de Friend, one of the patricians, gave the most to the theatre. That's amazing. Wait, no, wait, yeah, there's no observatory. Willem de Friend, clever. John Rice says, I like deer in theatre. Win-win. Just wait until you see my all-deer staging of Hamlet. <laughs> no observatory for the counts. Look at that. About your heir. Yes? Your marriage to Octavia is not what you'd hoped. She seldom sleeps in your bed, and over breakfast you exchange only a few frosty words before she departs to a board meeting. The last thing on your mind is procuring an heir, but the needs of the kingdom must prevail. Congratulations are in order. The wedding was a magnificent affair, says the Queen Mother. I'm very happy, thank you. It went about as well as could be expected. You're still in power, aren't you? Still got the crown on your head. That's what matters. Yeah, for now. Okay, you've done well so far, but something's still missing. An heir. 
You need someone young whose loyalty is assured. A child of our own, of your own would do the trick, even if they're a bastard, or the youngest of your many cousins. My wife and I will have a child together. I'm pretty sure I have a bastard child lying around somewhere. I plan to adopt a lowborn child from the orphanage, or I'll take my, I'll make my youngest cousin my heir. No, I won't. I'm pretty sure I have a bastard somewhere. The church won't be happy, but they're just as keen to avoid a civil war as we are. They'll legitimise the bastard without much fuss. I'll meet with the archbishop tomorrow. Oh shit. Oh god. Oh no. Have I just handed the game to the counts? Oh shit. No. It looks okay for now. Strange crops. Are the counts growing some wacky tobacco? Oh god. Count Nack says the harvest in the east has been an utter disaster. Look at this turnip. Let me take a look. My buttery turnips. The turnip is riddled with rot and twisted into the grotesque shape of a skull. Half the harvest is like this. We'll need help if, we, if we're to get through the winter. Farming is now fertile. Okay, well, alright. This is probably nothing to worry about, which would be bad for farming and stability and defiance. Send scholars from Quail University to investigate the strange crops. Raid the other region's granaries to support the counts. Or raid granaries and send scholars to investigate. I don't really... Whatever. Do your thing. There's probably nothing to worry about. Seems to be taking a lead, which is um, bad. Oh, no, wait. Send scholars from Quail University to investigate the strange crop. Seems to be eking into the lead. Either way, divinance is going up, stability and farming are going down. Whichever way you slice it. Oh, great. This is probably nothing to worry about. Whoops a daisy. Voting is closed. 16 nobles have said, let's do nothing. Seventh, take us. You'll regret your inaction, your majesty. Mark my words. Yep, stability is now unstable. In the end, more than half of the east harvest is blighted by rot and malformed into the shape of skulls or gnarled hands. A bleak winter lies ahead. The cause behind this blight is not yet known. Eastern soothsayers warn of a terrible omen. Yeah, of a demon, probably. Well, so much for my legacy as good at farming. <sighs> Captain Crimbo says solid noble role playing, frankly. Yeah, fair. Right, let's see about these furious followers. It's hard to run a kingdom, it just is. Your Majesty, that troublesome philosopher Ortega is gone, but her followers are marching on our estates demanding justice. You don't have an estate, Cole. Oh, I suppose we took it back. Lord, uh, Lady Patrician Noodle Cat 19 says it's the same in the coast, they're making her into a martyr. Cookie Cat 94 has done a super chat saying, uh oh, here we go. Did you know hens were often used in the Revolutionary War to identify colonists that were loyal to the crown? Chicken Cacciatore. Fuck. <laughs> Good lord. Wow, Cookie Cat. That was scraping the barrel so hard, it's mostly barrel. Good lord. Right, are we sending out the Royal Army to put a stop to this? Are we asking the church to preach forgiveness on all sides? Or are we paying the grandees to give amnesty to Ortega's former followers, which would screw my treasury? I'm vetoing, vetoing emptying my coffers because I need that money to stay on the throne. Sorry about it, the patricians. But it's so like, all I need to do is lose a hundred coins and that seems quite lucky. Uh, likely, rather. N Never likely says, so you've picked lower stability then. Well, no, the council might pick no lower stability. Oofed. George Martin says, haven't caught a Johnny stream in a while yet, but I'm pretty sure they've had a hell of a glow up. Thank you. I got new glasses and I 
slept for a while, so now I'm feeling well rested. Amaya at Kane has done a super chat. <sighs> Saying, why is the seventh god afraid of the... No, why is the ninth god... <sighs> why is the ninth god afraid of the seventh god? Because seventh god ate ninth god. <laughs> That's just brave, Amaya. I kind of loved it. Right. Stability's going down again, is it? Great. Send the Royal Army to put a stop to this. Shit. Your troops charge in and order the farmers back to their lands. Any complaint is met with a blade. Stability is now turbulent. There are rumours of unflattering corn effigies made in your image, but the, present, the peasants are too afraid to even whisper Ortega's name. Orthogonalus has done a super chat saying, I hate having to go all the way to the basement to play my Nintendo console, but oh well, c'est la oui. It's good, it's good, is the problem. That's, a, that's solid. Right. Okay, let's end the season. What? No, come on, what? No! The faith isn't low enough. Inviting a demon in the east, a count rides to a remote, unremarkable spot of Moorland. Soon, another joins them. What do you want, Scout? Scout's kicking off. Uh, Null and Void says, this is my first Johnny stream and I love it. Hello! Welcome aboard. Uh... Unfortunately, my lowborn are getting dreadfully devout, says Council, Count Eaglebart. <laughs> We're in no states to make a move against the monarch. It's far too dangerous. The High Inquisitor will pounce as soon as we do anything. Ho, ho, ho. The Count's aim is to lower their face to four or less. Yeah, they haven't done it, though. <laughs> Meanwhile, deep in the south, the grandee paces back and forth along the balcony of her hillside villa. I'm told that progress is slow, says Grandy the Indigo Witch. How could they be so blind, says Grandy Worm Fodder, who is it in a, it has bought the game? Uh, trusting in that fool of a monarch after everything they've done. The Grandy's aim is to raise, raise other regions' combined defiance to eight or more, or ensure another region starts a rebellion. <laughs> Come on, let's see how the patricians are doing. At the villa, sitting on a bench outside a sunbleached villa, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. The thrice-cursed monarch is still refusing to sell us any public land. It makes sense the treasury's not exactly suffering right now. Patience, my friend, let's bide our time until the monarch's gold runs out. <laughs> the patricians' aim is to lower the treasury to 1,500 or less. Well, I've got 1,600. Woofed. All right, we are going to tax the shit out of the patricians. Take that. <laughs> Panic in the council. Come on. Invasion? A plague of rats? Panic in the council. Your Highness, I bring bad news from the east. We are hearing reports of... I am sure your news can wait. I bring urgent tidings from the south that demand the monarch's attention at once. Wait your turn, you ignorant dolt. Now, now, yellow and purple. Over threat. That does sound bad, in fairness. The workers are striking. They demand fewer hours and higher pay. Oh, less bothered about that one, weirdly, Lady Patrician Sarah. Oh. Are we back? I think we're back. Are we good? I think we're good. Oh, we are. Okay, we're good. No data? What? Why is it saying no data? Excellent connection. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, that has increased the lag between me and you lot a bit. Uh, so, sorry about that. Um, right, so, there, there are crises in all three regions. The industries of the coast are in grave danger. The workers are striking and they demand fewer hours and higher pay. I'm less worried about that one. 
All these problems have arisen because the kingdom is increasingly unstable, your majesty. Something must be done, says the chancellor. What do you suggest? Unfortunately, we lack the resources to tackle all these problems at once. We must vote on which matters to prioritise. Shit. Do we reform the eastern courts? Which would be great for stability. Okay, so stability is going up either way. Do we restore order in the cities of the south? Or do we break up the strikes along the coast? I... I'm going to call for unity. Oh, Krinspec Vander says, what were the problems? We missed that. So, in the east, judges are letting off criminals after just like the slightest bit of a bribe. The south, there's riots all the time and they want to kill me and uh, install somebody new, which sounds rubbish. Uh, or there are strikes along the coast. Um, well, I... I'm going to roll the dice and say that one uh, that one option is going to be very popular. So let's see. I can only use one law on each vote, but that seems like the right one to use. Keep those votes coming. Ten seconds left. I think I get a point of unity, because it's 20 votes versus 21. 22, yes! <laughs> I got one, I got one. Amazing. You send your troops to enforce order on the streets of the sun, blah, blah. Uh, curfews are declared, rioters are arrested, stability is now unstable, defiance is now loyal. Even the priests of the Ninth Church preach for a return to law and order. This does the most good, though the citizens begin to distrust, distrust their clergy as a result. The crisis in the south has been quashed, making the kingdom as a whole slightly more stable, but the nobles of other regions feel like you are ignoring their problems. The east is now aggrieved. Defiance is now grumbling in the coast. So that's good for the grandees. But stability is stable, thank goodness. All right. I feel pretty good about that. Let's check in with a plague of rats. <laughs> Grandee Bobby strides into the council chambers, distraught, waving a dead rat by its tail. The fields and barns of the south are overrun by vermin, and we've no more poison for these horrible things. We can't cope anymore. Take that rat and go. The south can handle this alone. Deliver a supply of rat poison. Send them a shipment of cats, or hire some adventurers to clear out the rodents. Mm. This is irksome, because if I hire some adventurers to clear out the rodents, it will put my treasury below the level the patricians require it to be. Shit, so will the shipment of cats. But I do need defiance to go down. This one is doubly bad for me, so I'm vetoing hiring adventurers to clean out the rodents. Because it's also a shit idea. Um, Eto Perinka's done a super chat saying, Just popping in to say welcome back, Johnny. I missed you a lot. Couldn't catch the last time you streamed, so I'm sending my love today. Thank you very much. Um, it's very, very nice to be back. This is bad. Let's see what happens. Yeah, well, it looks like a shipment of cats. Because obviously the patricians want me to spend money. This is going to put me on 1500 which is what they need to advance their agenda. So basically, I feel like unless I can make money from... What was it? An Im no, riots or something? Something bad in the south, then I'm, uh, I'm doomed. Carnage says, is it bad that I'm literally sitting, cackling, and rubbing my hands together? Well, <sighs> I don't know. Voting is closed. Sending a shipment of cats. Fuck. Fuck. So the grandees 
and the patricians are both doing great. I can't thank you enough, Your Holiness. You're welcome, Bobby. You send a caravan of cats to the south. By the time they reach the destination, they're both hungry and very angry. The perfect rat-catching mindset. What happens? But despite a promising start, the cats prefer lazing around in the sun to actually catching vermin. The grandees lament the foolishness of the council. Defiance has gone up. That is worse again. Piss. Crin Beck Vander has done a super chat saying, Hi Johnny, thank you for another enjoyable stream. It is a nice distraction on my third day of COVID isolation. Oh, I'm sorry about the isolation. That sucks. Um, I hope that you recover swiftly. Do take it very, very easy. Um, because COVID's no joke. And yeah, I hope you recover very soon. Shit. Okay, well... This next one has to be amazing for me, otherwise I've lost it. two different ways, I believe. But it says invasion, so I'm not full of hope. But hey, if, the, if it's over, then we can take a little break. I don't know if we'll be able to squeeze in a second game. So we might play something else. We'll see. Oh, shit. Killjoy... 695 says, well, hello, your majesty. Glad to catch a live stream after I just took my Navy advancement exam. I asked for prayers that I did well because this could get me promoted. I hope it all goes well. All right. Your majesty, we're being overrun. Not by sword and spear, mind you, but by lampreys. A particularly virulent breed of Salish sea lampreys, to be precise. I shall fuck my way out of this. They must have been introduced by a careless trader, but now they're feasting on local fish and there's no natural predators to stop them. The council must do something. Okay. Do we introduce a new species to prey on the lampreys? Leave this be, it's just nature taking its course. Call a great culling to deal with this, or make up a story about them being a curth delicacy. I cannot stop... <laughs> a wooga! I cannot stop any of these from going ahead. Um, I'd like to make up a story, please. That's my choice. Shit. Keep calm and reload, says someone will be clipping that and making a gif. I hope they do. I hope they do. Nothing back from my spouse yet, which is weird. Oh my god. Oh my god. We might be making up a story about them being a curth delicacy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Just gonna make sure. Yeah, no, nothing. Nothing. I think my, uh, my partner's tattooing right now, so. Um, make up a story... About them being a cursed delicacy. Yes! You spread a myth about lampreys and their nutritional value as well as the greedy cursed anglers who covet them for their acquired yet refined taste. Hurr! I'm still in this thing! Not only do the grandees make a tidy profit from intrepid gastronomists, but they also have a new, a bountiful new food source, even if the lampreys are a little slimy and very full of teeth. Defiance has gone down. Farming is now good. Some grandees are more wealthy. Fine. Oh no, it's still not enough, is it? Fish. How terribly 948. No one cares about fish anymore. I do. I don't think that's going to be enough, is it? No, I've fucked it. I still lost. I still lost. Growing resentment. Deep in the south. In the back garden of a sun-bleached villa, a number of grandees crowd around a figure, raising their arms in a toast. Here's to the future king, Asimo, and the golden age on the horizon, says Grandy, the indigo witch. May the ninth god strike down the false monarch for their wickedness. 
Soon the Inquisition will be complete, says Grandy Wormfodder, and the Archbishop will crown our claimant. But what should be done with the monarch? Oh, Christ! All right, Grandies, we burning at the stake? Bobby says yes. So does Afera. So does Zig. Waza. Brady376. Uh, who else? I'll remember this. You bastards! Haywire says, bet you wish you were dunked in the river now. A glorious way to usher in the new king, I say. The ninth god will surely be pleased. First, the current monarch's grip on the kingdom must be at an all-time low. We wouldn't want to face any backlash from our little fireworks show, would we? For the final stage of their scheme. Oh, I haven't lost. The grandies must lower stability to three or less. If at least... No, wait. At least one region has entered the final stage of their scheme. If they pass it, they'll win the game. There are some exceptions. If two or more regions pass a final scheme stage, the winner will be decided at random. If stability, authority, or treasury hit zero, and a final scheme stage takes place at the same time, the scheme takes priority. If a rebellion ends with a rebellion win, and a final scheme stage pass at the same time, the scheme takes priority. Good luck. The monarch can only win in ambition events, which will appear after you've acquired an heir. I don't have an heir. Oh, I do have an heir. I think. Okay. PJ Buck has done a super chat saying, Hello Johnny, working with a shadow today, so not live stream for this NB, but long live the ruler, BNB do crims. Thank you PJ Buck, I hope working with a shadow is uh, pleasant today. Sitting on a bench outside a sun-bleached villa, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. To what do I owe this pleasure, Madam Treasurer? Says Lady Patrician Haruko. Oh, give it a rest, you know why I'm here, let's just hurry this up, shall we? Where do I sign? Here, and here, and here, says Lady Patrician Haruko. There you go, you've got what you wanted. Of course, goodbye, Madam Treasurer. Do my eyes deceive me? Was that the royal treasurer you were speaking with, says Lord Patrician Sajin. Indeed, my good, my friend, good news. With the monarch's gold running out, the treasurer is willing to sell off the kingdom's roads and bridges. Soon this kingdom will be ours, but what will we do when we own everything? <laughs> Do we turn the monarch into a proud corporate mascot, or mercilessly extract wealth from the kingdom until it collapses? Uh, this could be interesting, because if it's turn the monarch into a proud corporate mascot, basically I need to keep stability right in the middle. Because if it goes too high, I'm dead. If it goes too low, I'm dead. Well, I'm not dead. No, if it goes too high, I'm a puppet. If it goes too low, I'm burned at the stake. Shit. This is bad. So, they're going to try and turn me into a proud corporate mascot. We'll soon have the monarch dancing to our tune. We just need to make sure the kingdom's in a nice, comfortable rut. For the final stage of this game, the patricians must raise stability to at least seven. Okay. That is... That's horrible. Look at that. By royal decree, we can tweak the laws governing how the council votes. We can't pass more than three of these laws at once, and only one may, may be used for blah, blah, blah. If nobles vote for the monarch's choice, they gain 500 personal wealth. No. How nobles choose to vote is hidden from the monarch's view. No. Royal gamble, plus 500 treasury if the nobles vote for the selected option. If the nobles vote otherwise, minus 500 treasury. These all sound dreadful. But I'm taking royal gamble. And I'm going to replace Monarch's Choice, because no one listens to me anyway. Great. End the year. Levi Coffey says, break from training at the new job. At least I made it see the monarchy fa fail. Glad you're back, Johnny. Oh, I'm back. All right. Noble kidnapped, an untimely death, or transformation plague. Let's have a look at an untimely death, shall we? That sounds fun. <clears throat> Count Shakespeare the second. <laughs> Murder! My father, Count Shakespeare, has been murdered, and I know who did it! It was Grandy the Kesling by the blood of the dead. Don't let them deny it. I won't deny that I killed the ven venerable Count Shakespeare. Shit, the Kesling. But it was no murder. Shakespeare agreed to an honourable duel, which I won. 
Drakov's bones. It was no duel. It was a cold-blooded killing. What reason would my father possibly have to duel you in the first place? The reason for any duel is between the challenger and the challengee. A private matter not fit for this council. Okie dokie. Do we trial? Oh, this is all defiant shit. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. Hold a trial. Imprison the grandee. Send the spymaster out. Let the accused go free. Whatevs! Much of a muchness. <laughs> a duel is a duel. Let the, accursed go uh, let the accused go free. That, in fairness, is what I would have said. All right. The Kesling says, please let me go free. You're free to go, the Kesling. You would let a murderer walk loose, even after they admitted it right in this council chamber? Blood and stars. Oh shit, the East is enraged. And they have the highest military, so they could start a rebellion, technically. I'm glad the council respects the duelist code. Once agreed upon, a duel cannot be rescinded. Thank you for preserving our southern traditions, your highness. Transformation Plague. Your Highness, grim tidings from the East. There's never good news from the East. Some of our finest soldiers have come down with a strange sickness. What kind of sickness? They've come down with a sickness. The soldiers have come down with a sickness. Oh, that's actually quite good, because their military's not so strong now. At least 200 soldiers have sprouted tiny extra limbs, or even stunted and misshapen heads. Most of those affected have died, their hearts giving out under the strain. Yep, fair enough. Some kind of dark magic is at work here, Your Highness. I shall assemble the council. Best to fight magic with magic. Find a wizard to fix this. Let's wait and see if this problem resolves itself. Or send. we should send scholars from the university to investigate. I'm going to call for unity. Bing! Oh, no, wait. I don't want the disabilities to go up too much. Shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, no. Let's see. Okay, I'm not getting a point of unity, so that's good. Stability, rather. From the call for unity. Eleanor Smith says this is why you should have married the laboratory's lady. Yeah, true. Voting tied! <gasps> I get to break the tie by choosing one of these options. Well, I'm going to do this. We should send scholars from the university to investigate, because I don't need defiance going up any further. Da, 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 da. Investigate. I will get word to the university at once. You send a fleet of scholars from the university to examine the afflicted. Whether or not the mystery is solved, the East military is unlikely to recover any time soon. Sorry about it, purple. And you've had a noble kidnapped. Tough season for you lot. Count Dominati. Your Highness, the loyal and noble Count, Count Kaz has been taken hostage. What would kidnappers want with them? What would kidnappers want with them? Sure. There's some criminal organisation. These horrid miscreants demanded gold and safe passage to Ashmead in exchange for Kaz's return. Do we pay the ransom and empty the treasury? Send the East troops after the kidnappers or ignore the letter? I'll tell you what we're not doing is giving them all my gold because that would end the game. Very glad I didn't use my veto earlier. Sorry, Kaz. Kaz types, no. Listen. Kaz says, save me! I'm sorry, I can't, like, I've had to save myself. Is it cowardly? Yes. Would I do it again in a heartbeat? Well, it seems like we're sending some troops in, though, so that's good for you, isn't it? You know, 70% chance they'll get you back. Kaz Jones says, how could you? Well, I just clicked two buttons, really. It was easy. All right, voting is closed. Let's see if it works. The assault is a catastrophe. The outlaws were more entrenched than anyone realized, causing a hard fought battle. Though the Eastern forces are victorious, they're decimated. What's worse, Kaz is lost in the chaos. 
Sorry, Kaz. When they're eventually found, they're face down in a pool of blood. The Counts are quick to put the blame squarely on your shoulders. Kaz II has joined the Council. Kant Kaz has died. Defiance is now treasonous in the East. They were treasonous anyway. They're trying to make me into a demon host. Commander Vimes has failed from 30%. What is this, XCOM? I know, right? Okay, alright. Well, I'm I'm hanging in there. Oh shit. No wait, it's okay, yeah, it's still fine. Your Majesty, these upstarts are saying they have a right to your clone claim. Yes, I know. Continue to rebellion report. One or more regions are able to rebel as their defiance stat is higher than both authority and stability. If the rebels get more victory points than the loyalists, they'll win the game. If the Loyalists get more victory points than the Rebels, they'll put down the Rebellion and continue the game. If multiple regions rebel and win, a vote between the two re rebelling regions with the highest stats will determine the successor. Important! Rebelling regions have their schemes palsed. Regions with a high military stat are more likely to overthrow the Monarch with a Rebellion. So basically, the, the Counts in the East, this is probably their best shot, but their military is screwed. If stability, authority, or treasury hit zero, the rebels will win the war. All right. Rebelling will stop. Blah blah blah. Okay. Counts of the East, led by Steve Clapton, one has voted to rebel. If eight of you vote to rebel, it's on, baby. Two have voted to rebel. Three have voted to rebel. Let's go see about the Stone Maiden. Five have voted to rebel. Six, seven. Looks like it's happening. Anyway, right, let's see. The Stone Maiden. Behold your highness, says Count Deadboy. <laughs> uh, Count Deadboy pulls aside a tarpaulin to reveal a granite statue of Count Ether. The statue is impeccably detailed, its expression a frozen grimace. Uh-oh. A sad sight, is it not? A gift for me? That's not a statue, is it? Astutely observed, Your Grace, that is all that remains of my fellow Count. It seems the Stone Maiden is abroad in the East. Is there a fairy... T uh, who's that? She's a walking statue with burning yellow eyes. All who meet her gaze are turned to stone. She sleeps for years at a time for waking and terrorising the kingdom. She must have ambushed Count Ether on his latest walk in the cemetery. Please, Your Majesty, we must do something. We can't hire a wizard. We could send an army to smash the thing to rubble. It has zero chance of success. We could tell everyone in the East to hide or consult the fairy tales for a solution. What are we doing, everybody? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. There are some... Machiavellian people in this game who are trying to send an army to its death. But it looks... Ah, I should have... No, it's fine. Consult the fairy tales for a solution is pretty unassailably in the lead at this point. Yes, indeed. Voting has closed. You send... Uh, for an expert folklorist from Quail University. Ether the Second has joined the council. Hello, Count Ether the Second. Sorry you got turned to stone. According to legend, the stone maiden always stays far inland, away from the shore. Perhaps there's something there. That's the solution. A saline solution. She must react badly to seawater. You send a squad of knights, each armed with a blindfold and a bucket of seawater, and to your great surprise, it works. Absolutely amazing. As soon as she is drenched, the Stone Maiden shrieks and flees back to her underground lair where she falls into an immortal slumber. Stability is now civil. We don't want it to go up again. Okay, the East is not rebelling just yet. Now it's time for my heir! Your quest for an heir is finally complete. You stand before the council holding a small charge and child in your arms. Should I die, I ask that my crown be passed down to... The council hall is filled with nervous silence. My legitimized natural... Oh no, stability's going up. 
My legitimized natural born daughter. Sure, why not? The polite. Uh, the assembled nobles break out into polite applause by designated an heir. You've cemented the stability of the kingdom. To my ruin? I cannot believe. Oh my god, I've literally screwed myself over. A wooga. Eleanor Smith says there's always the plague ship. Yup. The common folk may lose some faith in the church, seeing their monarch's extramarital adventures being forgiven so easily. Oh well. Your Majesty, may I be the first to congratulate you on legitimizing your daughter? What is her name? Johnny Two. Praise the ninth, Your Majesty. I'm sure little Johnny Two will be will grow up to be a chip off the old block. <sighs> okay. All right. Come on, plague ship. The Royal... <clears throat> excuse me. The Royal Navy has stopped a ship in the harbour at Thalassus. Your Majesty, it is a merchant vessel. It is a merchant vessel from Danaea, and the crew have come down with some kind of plague. The captain refuses to... Sorry, the captain refuses to go home, saying his crew need food and medical attention before offloading any cargo. That ship is carrying fine silks and red eyes worth thousands. I don't care what happens to the crew. We need to secure the goods, says Lord Patrician Betray Al. Oh, very good. The infected have high fevers, oozing pustules, uncontrollable vomiting. Sounds like creeping scourge, which bumped off half the kingdom a few centuries ago. Let's call a vote. Right. That's bad for stability. Sink the ship and all aboard sounds bad. Well, um, mm. okay, stability's not going up in any case, so I shouldn't veto anything. Fuck it, Royal Gamble, why not? Oh no. I'm down 500. <laughs> I should have vetoed A, shouldn't I? No, I shouldn't have vetoed A. I should have bet on A. Oh well. That's 500 gold down the uh, drain for me. Voting is closed. Whoops, said Daisy. Allow the ship to dock and offload its goods. The dyes and silks are carried into port, much to Lord Patrician Betrayal's satisfaction, and the crew are transferred to the town physician's care. Unfortunately, most of the crew perish, and the physician soon comes down soon comes down with the creeping scourge, and it spreads and spreads, first along the coast, then across the whole kingdom. Your Majesty, the kingdom is in the grip of a full-blown plague. We must shut down the roads and quarantine the worst affected areas. Thousands die. Soldiers die, leaving the armies undermanned. Farmers die, leaving the crops to rot in the fields. There goes my legacy. <sighs> On the bright side, the plague kills people so swiftly that it burns itself out in three months, but it leaves the kingdom in a state of chaos and devastation. But stability is exactly where I want it. Ah, And... The Counts literally have no military. No one has a military, apart from the patricians who have one soldier. <laughs> that went brilliantly for me. A Count rise to a remote, unremarkable spot of moorland. Oh, look! Look! Faith has gone down! Because of my... Um... Extramarital affair. The Church is scrambling for power. The High Inquisitor is losing a grip on the populace, says Count Becker. How delightful, and we can make our move unseen, says Count Eaglebart. We must invite a demon to possess the monarch. The ancient be the books describe two demons, each attracted to different aspects of a human mind. Okay. Is it going to be Rakamasa, the mad tyrant, the cockroach queen? Uh, which is good good authority. Or Mumuriak. 
Duke of Greed, the face of all coins, Gull, raised treasury. It's Rakamasa, the mad tyrant, the cockroach queen, it looks like. Demon, looks like demons are back on the menu, friends. Continue. Voting has closed. Oh, it's sweet that they held a vote over which demon to go for. Okay, well, it's the Cockroach Queen. The Cockroach Queen was once a favoured servant of the Ninth God, but when she betrayed him, he banished her to the deepest caves where she became a twisted agent of the Seventh. She desires to rise to power once more. She will be attracted to a powerful monarch whose authority is unquestioned. For the final stage of this scheme, the Council must raise authority to at least eight. And we're starting an auction. Let's see now. We can have... Oh shit, there's a library that will put up stability. That's bad for me. There's a stadium which will put the military down, as if it could go much lower. There's a theatre which will reduce my authority. There's a prison which will reduce my stability. And there's an aqueduct, which would put farming up. That one, please! Or there's an observatory, which would lower faith. So, I think the grandees want the prison and the library to be built. Because I think... Oh, not the library, because that would put my stability up. You know what? Whatever. Let's see what happens. Aqueduct, please. Can we have an aqueduct? Aki duck. Looks like E and C, which would be great because they'd cancel each other out. Wow. Wow. You love that library. And that prison. Perfect. Perfect. Come on. 34 seconds. I think that's fairly unassailable. <laughs> Doomed Mammal has done a super chat, saying my partner Sarah has been having a heck of a time recently. She enjoys your voice, so could she get a sympathy and a, dis a distant digital head pat, please? Oh, yes, absolutely, Doomed Mammal, but I will do it in the style of shoutouts uh, that I've been doing for this whole stream. <clears throat> Sarah, hark, it is I, the monarch of a rubbish kingdom. Uh, I hear you have been having a heck of a time recently. So have I. There's been plagues of rats and uh, riots in the streets and everyone on the council wants me dead. But I'm still here. And you know what, Sarah? You're still here. And while my time as ruler of this land may not be long, oh, you have a lot of things ahead of you in life. Good things, middling things, some bad things. But take courage, Sarah! Because Doomed Mammal likes you a lot, it looks like. And by uh, association, so do I. So please accept this digi di distant digital headpat. I'm going Terry Wogan again, apparently. And I hope things start looking up for you soon. Take courage, Sarah! Right. Buildings funded. Prison and library. That went great for me. Continue to rebellion report. The kingdom is in rebellion. What? Ah, oh, the fucking counts are rebelling. The first side to earn five victory points will win. Victory points are earned through events. If the rebels are victorious, the monarchs are overthrown. You've got no soldiers. Rebellion. Opening strike and a new discovery. Rebellion. At long last, the Counts have reached their boiling point. You are confronted in your throne room by Countess Blue, her smile as sharp as a scalpel. You literally have no soldiers, Countess Blue. <gasps> oh my god! The prophecy! It's the war on Blue! <laughs> also, the Counts, your scheme is paused now. It's the war on blue. Awooga. The Counts of the East will bring you down, pretender to the throne. Hang on, I'm screenshotting this. 
We will rise up and fight for Dimitri, the true monarch. Authority is now credible. Stability is now teetering. Do you want to turn on toggle keys? No. Leave me alone. And I muted the audio. This is a formal declaration of war. The next time we see each other will be on the battlefield. You and what army? Caesar! One day I... One day I will see your head on a spike. Definitely not seizing you, because that will put stability down. There will be many heads on spikes before this is war is over. Mine will not be one of them. My authority is now dubious. My defiance can't go higher. Well, in the east, anyway. Countess Blue strides from your throne room without looking back. <clears throat> I didn't expect them to move so boldly. Sorry. I didn't expect them to move so boldly, Your Majesty. What are our chances against the rebels? I'm going to say excellent. The count, the counts don't even really have an army right now. We'll be fine. Unless they hire mercenaries from overseas or persuade another region to join their rebellion. Whoops-a-daisy. The leader of the rebellion is Count Steve Clapton. As reason for the uprising, he's citing your history of petty tra transgressions against the counts. Urge to murder rising. John Freeman says, Doom Mammal did a super chat with a request. I think he might have slipped the net. Oh, no, I, I did it all right. I got it. Did a whole big thing. Sarah! I hope you're well, Sarah. Right, so this is it. Civil War? That's right, Your Majesty. The kingdom is divided. There'll be a lot of death and suffering before all this is over. I can't wait. I'll go dig out the trebuchets, says the Marshal. Opening strike. It's been a long time coming, says Count Steve Clapton. Over 300 years ago, the East was conquered, but before that we were our own rulers, with a lineage of monarchs stretching back a thousand years! The glory days, says Countess Yuki. Indeed, and that's why we must rise up. By placing Dimitri on the throne, we will reclaim what we have lost. But first we must decide on tactics. My fellow Counts, I ask you, how shall we strike first? Our army is too weak to attempt any military action, unfortunately. If we suspect the patricians may join our cause, we can call them to war. With their one soldier, they'll be more likely to join us if the monarch's authority is low. We could also call upon the church to condemn the monarch, or finally you could send off an assassin to nip this in the bud. What? What? Are you sending it? Ah, shit. Steve, there's Steve Clapton straight out the gate asking for an assassin. All right, bring it. Thank God I took that honor guard of lovely, sexy, oily people. Cool, great. Kaz Jones says, my spirit shall haunt you. All right, cool, bring it. Whatevs, send an assassin, send him. Send an assassin after the monarch. Listen, all I have to do is make sure that farming is amazing in this country, and I've won. Thank you for meeting with me at such short notice, says Count Lightning 1998 JD. <laughs> the sum you offered to my interest, says the assassin. You understand why the sum is so high, though. Count Lightning, you, you have spent a lot of money on this assassin. Yes, you want me to assassinate the monarch. It is no trouble. I am a child of the Viper. If you have the gold and you want a person dead, they are dead. Lightning1998 JD in the chat says, It me! Yeah, it you, you horrible little tyke. Get it done. A new discovery. New discovery. The East sucks. We're... The scholar you sent to investigate the sickness affecting the Eastern Army has returned. Alas, Your Majesty, I could not find an answer to the mystery. After the Counts rose in rebellion, they kicked me out. You will never be able to solve the mystery of the Transformation Plague, but throughout the rest of the Civil War, the Eastern soldiers continue to suffer bizarre ailments. The East military can't go any lower. What's happening? Why is the music going all funny? You can tax some people. Oh, I'm a gunner. Well. Well. The grandees are very rich, aren't they? Yoink! 
The kingdom is in rebellion, and they've got no points. <laughs> An arms merchant, a great battle, something's wrong. What's wrong? It is a night like... Oh, shit. It's a night like any other. You're lying in your monarch-sized bed. That's very funny. That's very funny. Um, monarch-sized bed alone. Your wife is sleeping in another bedchamber. As is often the case, the troubles of the kingdom are keeping you awake, especially the rebellion. How could the counts betray you like this? For once, though, your insomnia comes in useful because it allows you to hear the slithering under your bed. Reach under your pillow for the hidden dagger. With the dagger in your hand, you feel better, but when the slithering turns into hissing, you feel much worse. Call for the honor guard. Your honor guard posts themselves outside your door every night. You call for them to come in and investigate the suspicious noise. Upon hearing your shouts, your coastal gladiators burst into the bedchamber. Their spears at the ready. What's the matter, your majesty? Check under the bed! One of your coastal gladiators suppresses a sigh, kneels down and looks under the bed. Then the gladiator rears back, roaring in agony. An enormous black serpent has lunged out from beneath your bed and sunk its fangs into his face. Hmm. Within moments, the knight has dropped dead, foaming at the mouth. The huge snake uncoils, pulsates, and abruptly transforms into a hooded human figure, a knife clutched in one hand. For a moment, your surviving honor guards can only stare in shock. <laughs> Snow Ninja Sandcat says, The guard has a helmet on, though. That's very, very true. What are you waiting for? Kill it. Protect your monarch! Your honor guard and the assassin engage. Somehow the lone killer cut down several of them in an instant... Though they received only superficial cuts, they're already convulsing with foam dribbling from their lips. Eventually, the assassin is cut down, but not before your coastal gladiators have been utterly decimated. The few survivors die within hours, also foaming. Your Majesty, are you alright? No, I absolutely am not. Calm down, Your Majesty, the danger has passed. If the assassin had caught you sleeping, you'd not be talking to me now. You should thank the knight for your insomnia. Who was the assassin? One of the children of the Viper, the most feared assassins in the kingdom, no doubt by, hired by your enemies in the east. They can use magic and tri tricky poisons in combat. A single Viper's child can slaughter even the kingdom's finest warriors. We'll have to be more vigilant from now on. I just saw a snake turn into a man. Yes, I'd heard rumour that the children of the Viper could turn themselves into snakes. Until now, I had thought it mere superstition. I need some time to process this. Of course. I lived. I survived. Whew. The council will stop at nothing, even murder, to bring you down. Thank the knights for your honor guard. May they rest in peace. Things could have gone very differently. Imagine if I hadn't taken an honor guard. An arms merchant. The Chancellor. Your Majesty, a merchant's here to see you. He's come all the way from Kerf, I hear. Hope he has something to, useful to sell me. Yes, I believe he does. Your luminance. So wonderful to see you. I hear little Johnny the Second is doing very well. Very well, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Moreover, you'll be pleased to know the Kerth Senate have deliberated for many weeks and ultimately agreed to extend you the offer of an arms contract. Interesting. Not just any contract, mind you. The Republic has offered to sell gunpowder weapons, muskets, cannons, blunderbusted bombards. You, you name it, I'll have it. Alright, what have you got? You've got everything your heart could desire. I'll take some blunderbusses. I'm finished. Subtitle is 850. No thanks. I can't afford that. Forget it. I don't need gunpowder to win the war. Look at them. They've got one soldier and it's loyal. <laughs> if that's your wish, Illuminance. Yeah, sod off, Merchant. Alright. A great battle. This is going to be very funny. The Counts have attempted to muster an army, but all they could gather were a few old men and beardless youths. There are no real soldiers left in the East. We're doomed, says Count Steve Clapton. Yes, I think we might be doomed, says Conte Kari. Loyalists gain five victory points. With no army to speak of, the Counts cannot march in rebellion. They mill around their camp, waiting for the monarch's forces to come and smash them to pieces. Well. Smashing rebellion, everyone. Well done. End season. I'm hanging in here. Right. 
I'm going to... I'm not going to adopt any of these. The Loyalists are winning the rebellion. The rebels are crumbling. Hmm. The wars end. The Counts are mustering their troops, Your Majesty, and their guard is down. It's the perfect time to strike. I've discovered a hidden mountain pass that allows us to slip our troops into the east undetected. We can end this rebellion before it starts. Make it so. Your Marshal rides out with your orders, leaving you to wait anxiously for the outcome of the battle. The next few days are agony. When she finally returns, she strides into your throne room with a triumphant gleam in her eyes. Marshal, report! Just as I suspected, the Count's army was a disorganised mess. They didn't stand a chance. We ambushed their troops and drove them into a river, leaving them to face a dismal choice, death by spear or death by drowning. By the time we were done, their whole army was slaughtered, our troops found themselves loose in the east, totally unopposed, so we ordered a massive push through their lands, looting and pillaging the whole way. As we speak, Your Majesty, our armies are laying siege to Count Steve Clapton's fortress. <laughs> Becca says, right, now can we summon this demon? It's possible. That was quicker than I expected. The best kind of war is quick and bloody, in my experience, says the Marshal. Victory! The Marshal rides back out to oversee the siege. A few days later, you receive word that Count Steve Clapton's castle has fallen, and just like that, the rebellion is over. <laughs> the Indigo Witch says, well, someone went in the river. Yes! Soon the armies of the Grandees and the Patricians are parading through the city, waving their banners and showing off their loot. Meanwhile, Count Steve Clapton, the leader of the Rebellion, is brought to you in chains. Common folk crowd into the palace to watch the trial. We need a strong monarch in this kingdom. You weren't up to the task, says Count Steve Clapton. But I was. Sentence Count Steve Clapton to death? Throw him in the dungeon, or let him go with a warning. Let's put this to a vote in YouTube. Steve Clapton. Chop. Choppy. Choppy. Or clinky clanky. Ask your community. Woofed. Looks like Choppy Choppy. Sorry about it, Steve Clapton. Stiff backed, stiff backed, uh, stiff backed and silent. Count Steve Clapton is dragged out to the city square and led up to the platform before the roaring masses. The executioner's axe falls, the head bounces into the crowd, and the common folk kick it around and cheer! Count Steve Clapton has died. Count Steve Clapton II has joined the council. Just like that, the East is defeated. The rebellion is over. The kingdom is yours again. Never likely has summoned the blood pair. It is the first time I'm pleased to see it. Um, it's a pair with arms, legs, and a face, and a mug full of Count Steve Clapton's blood. We won the war on blue. You're absolutely right, Tasty Fish Tasty. Right. Authority is now imperious. Oh shit. As you sit resplendent atop your throne, the common folk raise a mighty cheer. Long live the monarch, they shout. Long live the monarch. Okay. Well, authority is seven. Seven is not eight. So that's good. End the season. Yes, yes, yes. You're all trying to do horrible things to me. Get on with it. Your ambition. Your ambition. Your ambition. Come on. At the start of your reign, you said he wanted to be the parent of the nation. Yes! But so far, you've done a dismal job of it. The kingdom is scar starving, your majesty. Pe peasants are dying of hunger every day, and they curse your name. Should have done trade. The current ambition isn't working out for you. If you want to stop the nobles from overthrowing, you need to pivot, change your image. 
My advice would be to infiltrate each region with loyal spies, defeat their schemes with schemes of our own, but your other advisors have other ideas. We should crush them, smash their armies, and force them to submit. Your Majesty, if you help us spread the zeal of the Ninth God, your, the Church will lend our full support. With the backing of the Church, the nobles wouldn't dare move against you. Don't listen to the rest of these fools. Have you heard the Scepter of Ages? It's a lost artifact forged by Queen Alma the Wise. There's a legend that any monarch who recovers it will rule over a golden age. Um, Crush all those plotting against you with an iron fist, I think. Everyone's military is really low. On account of the plague. A wise decision, Your Majesty. I'll begin... Sorry. A wise decision, Your Majesty. I'll begin putting together my plans. But of course, it won't be easy. Oh, shit! Your priority is to raise your authority and the kingdom's overall military as much as you can. I've got an army! They haven't! Buck. My, my authority's fine, but now I need to put military up. Well, that was the worst thing I've ever done. That was very silly. I shouldn't have done that. Bollocks. A new honor guard. Oh, an invitation. Crap. I thought that was like the military that each region could muster. Oh, no, wait, because when they're loyal, they're mine. Well, tits. I just... I just... I completely threw myself under the bus then. Oh, well, Your Majesty, it's my singular honour to invite you to attend the annual Night of the Seven Pyres celebration. What's that, Grandy Puma? Do you really not know it's the biggest festival in the entire South? I can't believe I just picked military. It's a celebration of the Ninth God and his victory over the other eight. It's the most sacred and holy night of the year. Wee Fireworks! Indeed, Your Majesty. I'll go. I trust you're willing to finance and organise one of the pyres. It's customary for the monarch to do so. I'll make sure it's a night to remember. Sure, why not? Whoops a daisy. A new honor guard. Death of the honor guard. 14 says it's been three hours and we haven't had a break. Um, well, the thing is, if we have a break, loads of people are going to disconnect and it's going to, to ruin the game. So um, if you need if you need to take a break for 14, uh, go have at it. But I'm going to carry on. The death of your honor guard in the line of duty was a tragedy, your majesty. We don't have time to mourn. We must replace them all once. The monarch needs protection. What are my options? Each region offers a selection of elite guards. The counts with the Knights of Bar. Patricians. We want more champion gladiators. I love them. Oh. Since your previous honor guard were coastal gladiators who died screaming for their mothers, there's nobody left from the coast who's qualified. Right. Battle nuns. Yep. Oh, yeah. But they love the church. Eh, we'll get the battle nuns anyway. Battle nuns. The battle nuns arrive in the palace a few weeks later. They nod to you silently, their solemn steel masks betraying nothing before filing into formation behind your throne. Okay. End season. I cannot believe I have screwed myself over this badly. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose because I picked military. Why didn't I pick trade? <laughs> oh well. Uh, auction. Trade could go up, authority could go up, stability could go down, trade could go down, stability could go up, authority could go down. Oh, uh, please don't build a monument. <laughs> Shit. I, I screwed it. I screwed myself. Ah. It looks like... It looks like the Counts are building a monument. That's bad. Um... And the patricians are building a library to go up. Uh, to put stability up. So I'm once again in a pickle twice. I'm either going to be burned at the stake or turned into a demon host. Wonderful. Yep, that's just happening, isn't it? So, even if I picked a goal, an ambition, that would be easier for me to fulfil, I doubt I would have had time.
Well, that's bad. End season. Shit. A nightmare. Oh, no. Late into the night, your sleep is fitful. You dream of walking an endless maze deep underground. Something's tugging you in the right direction, but you grow more and more dizzy as you walk. Light flashes. Ah. When you look down, your hands have transformed into bloody pincers. In a moment of clarity, you understand where you need to be. Focus on your hands. You wake. Are you sure, Your Majesty? You're in the council chamber in full session... Surrounded by nobles, dressed in your usual ceremonial garments. Close by, the counts watch you closely. Of course, that's what their majesty just said, wasn't it? Uh, what did I just say? No, wait, what's going on? The chancellor gives you a worried look over their glances. You just announced that you would have the prisoners executed, your majesty. All of them. What prisoners? A group of suspected traitors from the south, your majesty, but there's been no trial, none of the usual procedures. No need to worry about that, your majesty. You have made your decision. This isn't right at all. You intend to protest, but instead your head nods without you intending any anything of the sort. How delightful, Your Grace. Thank you, says Count Becker. <laughs> and Becker in chat says, Awooga! Over the coming days, you keep waking up in half recalled conversations, standing in a room without remembering how you got there, reading letters replying to orders you never gave. My authority is now tyrannical. Whispers spread among the palace staff. Your wife Octavia avoids you even more than usual. Then one morning, the Chancellor comes to find you looking harried. Your Majesty, I can't stand back from this a moment longer. You've been behaving very erratically. As for the orders you've given lately, obviously we all know a monarch must keep a tight grip on the kingdom if it's to survive. To thrive, rather, but this has become a sheer cruelty. You know of no such orders. You're right, I must be cleansed. You have the palace servants run you a bath of holy water. The scent of the water rises, stinging your throat and nose. You're sure this will be fine. Gingerly, you lower yourself into the water, and a strange, strange ringing starts to echo in your ears. Everything goes black. You blink awake to see Conte Becker and a group of more counts watching you smiling. I'm in the nuddy! Go away! You're shackled in a small stone room with the tiniest window letting in pale sunlight. How in the ninth god name did you capture me? We apologise for your rough treatment, your majesty, says Count Eaglebart. Our Lady Rakmasa, Rakmasa warned us that you have a stubborn streak. It would have been shame if you'd run away. What are you doing? We brought a demon, the Cockroach Queen, to this realm, and she set up a home in your body. Now you have a choice, Your Majesty. None of us want bloodshed today, though I'm sure Rakmasa would enjoy it. If you allow her to live in your body, you can stay on the throne with the rightful monarch Dimitri as your grand advisor. Dimitri will be making all the decisions, and Rakamasa will be doing most of the steering, but you'll be let out for fresh air occasionally. Or you can be subsumed altogether, and Dimitri can take the crown. What does Rakamasa want? She demands blood, and blood she will have. Can we negotiate? I'm afraid not. She hungers. I'll never submit to this! Your Highness, there's little choice. Rakamasa requires sustenance. Your body twists, your hands fuse and crack, and your fingers become pincers, just as in your dream. The last thing you hear before the demon completely takes hold is the sound of thin, inhuman, but delighted laughter. The Counts are victorious. Monarch Johnny was never seen again, but the next monarch, Dimitri, kept a hideous cockroach monster chained in the deepest dungeons of the palace. Hooray! The grandees continue to throw accusations of witchcraft and heresy at their enemies. Everyone gradually learns to ignore them. The patricians' attempt to buy the kingdom ended in failure. Bankruptcies were filed. Marks uh, were scratched in secret ledgers. The risk-reward calculus wasn't favourable. Perhaps next time. Their plans to control Monarch Johnny had fallen through, but the Count still had a demon at their disposal. They commanded it to possess or eliminate their rivals on the Council, ensuring a smooth ascension for the new Monarch, Dimitri. A wooga. I, I lasted three years and six months. Is that it? My spouse was Octavia the Coast, and my successor was Monarch Dimitri. That's not Johnny the Second at all. <sighs> Wealthiest noble was Jenny. Poorest noble was Von Karma. Look at this bastard. Well, well done to the counts, I suppose. Bloody hell. That was quite full on. 
Dr. Branger says that's 10 rounds. Um, that was 10 rounds, but it felt like, I don't know, because so many things happen, it feels like the game lasts for years longer. Three years and six months isn't that long. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Baz McStay says, GG, it was close. It was. Um, that was tricky, but you know what? I actually felt like I did pretty well there. Um, I uh, have been told by one of the uh, makers of this game that at the minute they feel like it's a little bit too hard for the monarch, so the next patch is going to sort of balance it a little bit. But um, you know what? I genuinely felt like that was um, that was pretty close. So there we go. Um, I'm going to call the stream there because we don't have time for another one, unfortunately, because that one was three hours. Um, I got turned into a cockroach, so well done again to the counts. That was pretty wild. Um, and uh, yeah, I will, well, I'll see you very soon. I am back on Saturday. God, I, f I really, for a second there, thought I was going to win. Really felt like I could do it. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll play this again sometime because I know you all really like it. Um, I'll be back on Saturday with new episodes of Press Any Kiadini, um, which is uh, currently we're playing The Outer Wilds. Um, and then, well, on Monday I'm streaming again with Codename Games on Twitch, playing D&D uh, &D with B. Dave Walters, um, Gabe James Games, um, Mark Humes, uh, Refrost, and Ellen... Uh, from Outside Extra, um, so you can you can watch me be a tabaxi who doesn't understand money there. Um, and then I believe, unless there's something in my calendar, uh, I should... Mm, uh, depends. I might be streaming on ne uh, next Tuesday, streaming some painting, but then I'll be back anyway on Thursday. So basically, I'll, I'll be around a lot. Outer Wilds or Outer Worlds? Outer Worlds. I've done it again, haven't I? Um, so... Um, Jack Escape the Box again says, ooh, where's that? Twitch.tv slash CNE Games. Um, the Outer Worlds. Oh, just look at my Twitter and I'll, I'll, I'll tweet out links to the stream. Anyway, basically what I'm trying to say is there's lots of me happening in the next week or so, so you can catch that. Um, there's loads of stuff on the channel for you to watch anyway. Uh, and I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. If you uh, can support me over there um, and would like to support me, that would be very much appreciated. But also, thank you all so much for, for watching and chatting and super chatting and plotting and scheming and uh, eventually um, turning me into a cockroach monster. That was pretty wild. So yeah, thanks again. Have a lovely, lovely rest of your day and uh, take care of yourselves. Goodbye! <laughs>